right now it is time for your local 10 tropical update. Let's get to our hurricane specialist, Brian Norcross, joining us live with more on this. Brian. Hey, Louie and Christy, we have a tropical wave to take a look at out in the Atlantic. You know, we get toward hurricane season, we start looking out there. And the Hurricane Center is uh, watching this one. You can see the swirl that's developed out here. But we also see toward the end of the loop, the swirl is kind of collapsing because it's running into unfavorable upper-level winds coming in like that. It's more likely to just end up being a moisture surge going through Trinidad and Tobago and the Venezuelan coast. And uh, that should be it for that. But it just tells us that, you know, hurricane season is here. The big system that's affecting us is this big upper level low pressure system over top of the Carolinas up here and this moisture feed that's running up into it. Now, today we had a magnificent day because of the dry air coming down on this side. But as we take a look at that moisture feed close up, we see how close it was to us here in Dayton Broward. And indeed, just the edge of it got the keys today where there were some good tropical downpours. Well, as we move toward the end of the week, as Betty's been talking about, this is going to lift north. So more moisture coming in and uh, more tropical moisture, tropical downpours in the forecast. All right, as far as the hurricane season goes, here we are. And here's the good news. The next month is the quietest part of the hurricane season before things really take off in August. So enjoy it while we're on the low end of the curve. This is this is kind of like the COVID thing. The low end of the curve is where we want to be. <laughs> yep. We hear about curves way more than we want to. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Brian. But as we go north, here's Hollywood Beach. Not happening just yet. Mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies here. I think that will allow temperatures to get into the upper 80s again today. We'll track that rain here in about two seconds. Let's get you uh, a look at the tropics. We are tracking uh, an area of low pressure right across uh, the North Carolina coast right now. It's running out of room, though, to develop, and this is why it's only got a 0% <laughs> chance, basically, of developing now. Near zero. Not going to happen. Once these uh, areas of low pressure start interacting with land, you, you just you, you lose the moisture source and too much friction when you're over land. You want moisture and you want a smooth surface, and that's what we've got here. But conditions unfavorable for development with this tropical wave. And where are we, by the way? Here's South America, here are the Windward Islands. This is moving uh, west northwest, and that could bring some uh, gustier uh, squalls to places like Trinidad and Tobago, but near 0% chance of tropical development with this system as well. All right, welcome back into Weather Center Live. Breaking news right now. The National Hurricane Center has now dubbed an area to watch. It is now subtropical depression four. It is in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Of course, we're also juggling several other areas or invest that we have to watch. And if you've, if you've been watching us throughout the day, you've seen us talk about Invest 95L. This is off of the coast of Cape Cod by about 300 or 350 miles or so. It's moving to the east northeast at about nine to 10 miles per hour. Part of the reason that the National Hurricane Center has said, yes, we're going to bring this up in terms of category to a subtropical depression. It's because the cyclone is now getting into an area of warmer waters or warmer sea surface temperatures. So it is forecast tonight to turn toward the northeast on Tuesday, but we're still seeing this gradual progression right now to the east northeast about nine to 10 miles per hour. So keep in mind subtropical storms and tropical storms do feed off of warmer sea surface temperatures and the ocean waters. So that fuel into the storm is likely going to cause it to at least maintain, not necessarily any sort of strengthen as we go throughout uh, the next three to five days time. But if you look at the track here, you can see into Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon and early Thursday morning still maintaining at about 35 miles per hour. So again, from the National Hurricane Center, uh, a cyclone off of the Cape Cod coast by about 300 miles has now been dubbed subtrop subtropical depression. Four. If it retains more of a name, then we're talking about Dolly, which is the fourth name on the list. You can see that we've already gone through the first three. Of course, Arthur and Bertha were before the official start of the hurricane season. Time now for your tropical update as we say hello to TD number four. Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis joins us from the Weather Authority Center. Betty. Good evening. Well, thankfully, tropical depression number four is moving away from land. It's churning off the east coast of the U.S. Winds of 35 miles per hour moving east northeast at 10 miles per hour. Of course, this system got upgraded at five o'clock this afternoon. If it gets any stronger, meaning 
becoming a subtropical storm. It's not going to have much time to do that. I would have to do it by tomorrow morning because after that it's forecast to pull out over some cooler Atlantic waters, at which point it would weaken. Either way, not a threat for us. We'll let you know if it becomes subtropical storm Dolly. Calvin and a lot of you have been wondering whether or not we're going to see that thick stuff here at home. We'll definitely have a haze in the sky starting tonight into tomorrow, but it won't be as dense as it has been over the Caribbean islands. There's the potential that it could very well be as we move on into the Gulf Coast states. Now, as far as the tropics are concerned, the waves that are heading south, those are in check because of the dust, but we do have subtropical depression number four, 35 mile per hour winds in the middle of the ocean and expect it to stay there, not lasting very long. At least in the next 24 hours, it'll hold its own and then after that fall apart. And welcome back, everyone. I want to bring you up to speed with what's going on in the tropics because we do have a new name storm today, Tropical Storm Dolly. So you can say hello to Dolly out there. Again, it was a, a getting a better organization earlier this morning, and so the National Hurricane Center has now named it in the Atlantic. Good news is it is no threat to land, no threat to the lower 48, and is going to be going off to sea and likely weakening actually pretty quickly by tonight into tomorrow. However, right now it does have 45 mile per hour winds moving to the northeast at 13 miles per hour just off the uh, coast there just around Halifax as we get into parts of Nova Scotia. So something to watch as it rolls out into the Atlantic. It is a our fourth name storm for the season. There's the forecast the track taking it through Wednesday evening and again no threat to the United States or any other landmass out there as it just rolls into the Atlantic. However we are tracking a few little spots some disturbances some invest in the eastern Pacific right now about a 50 percent chance of developing a cluster of thunderstorms out there uh, around 30 30 mile per hour winds moving to the west and over the next five days we could see potential development if it did it would be tracking farther west getting farther out into the Pacific and then getting a little closer to Hawaii about a 70% development on this one invest 93 E uh, that again is going to be taking a westward movement as well over the next five days uh, taking it closer to the islands of Hawaii but not quite there just yet again still have many areas to watch in those spots and here's our tropical cyclone names for the Atlantic for 2020 we we are on Dolly right now, so there you go. Tropical Storm Dolly today as we continue through the 2020 season. Here's the areas that we normally see hurricane development. Most of them actually happen pretty close to home for the month of June, especially into late June. However, you can get some development across the East Coast, and that is where we saw Dolly. All right, time now for your tropical update. Tropical storm Dolly has formed over the North Atlantic, becoming the fourth name storm of the season. It feels early for it to be the fourth name storm, Brian. <laughs> it's super early. It's ridiculously <laughs> early. But as with the other storms we've had this year, this kind of storm is not indicative of the hurricane season. It was a North Atlantic system happened to go over the Gulf Stream. So, yes, we're up to the D storms here, and it's only the 23rd of June, but... That doesn't make any difference to what's going to happen in August and September. But the big news locally, of course, is the dust. Now, here's the story. Look at the dust down here in the Caribbean. I mean, it is thick and serious. I mean, serious for people with breathing problems down there. But we don't see it on the satellite here, but there is a thin layer, uh, not very thick. It, we can measure it in the atmosphere. You might see a little milkiness. Should make for a nice sunset tonight, but that's it. All right, now, when we look at the IRES uh, uh, model of this, this is the NASA model, and there you see that big plume down in the Caribbean. Look, another intense one off here just off of Africa. Watch as we go through the next 10 days where this goes, okay? And watch where we are right here. Okay, here we go. And you see we get winged by it a couple times, but the uh, dark browns go all the way around us. This high pressure out in the Atlantic, the nose of it is sticking in like this. So in North Florida, they'll probably get more. In Texas, they'll get more. And down in the Caribbean, unfortunately, they're going to keep getting it here as long as this uh, goes on, which looks like it's going to be the next couple of weeks or so. Now, here's what's going on with Dolly. It's a 45-mile-an-hour tropical storm heading out into the cold North Atlantic. No problems there. All right, so no problems for us, and looks like we're going to miss most of the dust. Well, it's been one of these spots that's been fighting storms too, but tropical weather as well. I mean, yeah, we're right here now in the middle of hurricane season all the way through November 30th, so we start have to watch in uh, towns like Miami, up and down the East Coast here, and out along the Gulf Coast.
coast too for some of these storms. We've got one out there. That's the bad news. It's Dolly, which is kind of teeter tottering on tropical storm and tropical depression strength. But the good news is Dolly is not going to be an issue. Here's New York and there's the storm at least 500 miles out to sea and it continues to work to the east and the northeast way up high. Here's Nova Scotia, New Finland here, and we're not even going to see that be impacted either. So there goes the storm. There is Nova Scotia. There's New Finland. And then here is Dolly uh, turning out to be more of a tropical depression here over the next 24 to 36 hours. And then it fizzles on out beyond that should be pretty much done by Thursday morning. And if it gets close enough, it might spin in some rain out across New Finland. And that would be just about it. I know we just brushed on the fact that we've got tropical depression Dolly spinning right now in the, in the Atlantic, but uh, it was a tropical storm early this morning. Now tropical depression. This thing will continue to deteriorate, but just wanted to give you an update on what it's currently doing. 35 mile per hour winds right now moving northeast at 12 miles per hour. And in the Atlantic Basin, that's really about it. The big story is all about that Saharan dust that will be moving into our neck of the woods by the time we head into this weekend and early next week. We'll keep you posted on all of that. All right, time to take a look at the uh, tropics. And if you slept it off or if you took a little break from watching the Weather Channel, shame on you. No, we actually had our fourth name storm of the season here, almost, uh, you know, as early as we get a fourth name storm. And there's some interesting facts to talk about. Okay, so 35 miles an hour. Uh, this one formed yesterday, depression, storm, now back to depression. It's completely decoupled, uh, if you will, in terms of the convection. It's way down to the south, so it's on its way to transitioning. And in case you're wondering, by the way, June 20th is the earliest that we've ever had a name storm on record, obviously given the satellite era. But here's Dolly right here, 12:15 uh, on June 23rd. So not too far behind. Only 10 other seasons, by the way, since 1851, where we've had four name storms, if you will, before July 1st. And in case you're wondering about the earliest fifth name storm, it was July 12th of 2005, a historic hurricane season, which if you heard Jen earlier, she said the last time we had an outbreak of dust like that in San Juan was 2005. Hmm, wonder if there's a correlation there. We'll see. Tropical Storm Dolly again. Look for a wave swell up toward Newfoundland. Uh, typically, you see opposite basins where the Atlantic is busy. The East Pac is quiet. The East Pac is busy. The Atlantic is on the quiet side. We will have a strong tropical wave that will be heading into uh, the Lesser Antilles. But we're watching this huge area of Saharan dust, which will spill in to Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, just in time for Friday afternoon. And then it'll disperse. There's going to be a lot of rainfall, too, that comes up Friday afternoon and towards South Texas. So that'll wash some of that out. Some great stuff there from Dr. Nab as we're talking about those explosive thunderstorms. But also, Paul, we got to talk about the tropics. Yeah, we are in the first month of uh, hurricane season in the Atlantic. We already had three named storms. Now we had our fourth Dolly. Say hello to Dolly. Yeah, I had to say at least once. It's way out here across the Atlantic. The good news is it's no longer a threat to any land. It's now uh, kind of post-tropical. It had some tropical, some mid-latitude kind of characteristics. So it was more of a, it was a subtropical uh, system for a few hours, really. But it continues to stay offshore. And outside of that visible satellite showing the actual cloud swirl, there's not much tall cloud activity with this. So it's really not that well organized right now anymore. It's going to kind of skirt by the far eastern provinces there in Canada. Otherwise, uh, it's really not an issue for anyone on land. Yes, mariners, definitely a concern. Uh, some marine life out there as well. But in terms of impact in the U.S., it's no longer an issue, except it just goes in the record books as we've already used up the D name, the Dolly name so far for this year. That's good news. And uh, as we were talking about earlier uh, in the previous show, Dr. Postel, with that uh, Saharan dust moving across, that also plays into what's going on with Atlantic hurricane season. We'll have much more on that coming up in a few. Colleen? Yes, and Paul, I can't fault you for saying hello, Dolly. Tev and I were doing it all yesterday, so you just have, you just have to. Even all the way through the weekend, we'll keep the rain chances really low. As we get in the next week, we'll start to ramp up the rain chances there and get back to our normal summer-like pattern. Tropics quiet right now. We're looking at the Gulf and the Caribbean here. Nothing really going on. There is one impressive tropical wave here that's south of all that dry Saharan air. It's up here, so we'll keep an eye on this one here in the upcoming days as it approaches the island. Some of the models do want to do something with it. Now, we're going to totally switch gears and talk about the tropics because there is a couple of areas we have to watch for.
by the National Hurricane Center, Patrick. Absolutely, starting in the eastern Pacific first, where we are looking at an area of disturbed weather, complex of showers and thunderstorms in the eastern Pacific waters. That's being monitored by the National Hurricane Center for some possible tropical development. We did have Boris already, so two named storms so far in the 2020 season for the eastern Pacific. Now over into the Atlantic, as we're looking at that outlook, we do have another area of disturbed weather that is south of where we're getting a lot of that Saharan dust, so it does need to be monitored. Complex of showers and thunderstorms. They are also another area up to the north that we're keeping an eye on as well. Low chance for tropical development in the next five days. Well, it's time now for our tropical update. And Betty is joining us right now. Any action out there right now, Betty? No, things are quiet. We are wrapping up the month of June and not expecting a cyclone to develop out there for today. So uh, let's consider where we are in the season. Tomorrow is the first day of July and climatology shows us what we would typically see in terms of the ramp up, which we would expect to start to happen once we get into the month of August. So for now, things are pretty quiet, which means we are focused focusing on our local weather and the heat temperatures soaring this afternoon, breaking records out there in Miami. 97 degrees is what we're showing. We'll talk about just how hot we've gotten already today and what's ahead for the rest of the week as we count down to the 4th of July. See you in a few. Janice. Uh, we have a new, if you, in case you're tuning in, we have a new tropical depression five that is in the Atlantic and actually moving toward Bermuda later on today and tonight. And we think gusty winds of 35 to 40 miles per hour with some of the showers that move through Bermuda are indeed possible. And it is moving very quickly east northeast at 17 miles per hour. So by this time tomorrow, it should be past Bermuda, moving away into the distant Atlantic with no threat to land. So that's good news there. But uh, it kind of popped up uh, out of a, a sort of a complex of, of uh, events, I guess, yesterday and last night east of Florida that is now rapidly moving in this direction. There is some chance here, at least a Official forecast in the Hurricane Center has this thing uh, becoming a tropical storm. So that would be very interesting. And this is going to be uh, yet another example of how busy really it's been this hurricane season so far. Even though we haven't had a hurricane, we uh, in the Atlantic side, we uh, have been very busy with lots of depressions and named storms, five of them so far. This is what we have now over the Gulf of Mexico. Nothing imminently worrisome here to me, but there are some signs that... Um, the, we could be dealing with an area that is at some risk for tropical development going forward. I think that's the best way to put it. Clouds and storms will be gathering a bit more effectively in the next few days with a frontal zone here and an extending trough westward from there over the Gulf of Mexico. While the surface pressures are relatively high, I think this is the kind of thing that bears watching again in about you know, two to four to five days or so with these things hanging out over the water, the accompanied spin, the circulations aloft from old thunderstorm complexes that keep coming into the region, piling up over this front. Add all that up and you think, okay, a lot of rain and storms, unsettledness to be sure, Felicia, with some chance of development going forward. You know, let's have a live look at uh, Bermuda from our Earth Cam because Bermuda, believe it or not, had a tropical depression move very close to the region in the last uh, 12 hours or so. It is moving away now from the island. Gusty winds and maybe a couple of inches of rain are still possible, but it, I mean, I'm looking at the solid pictures. I wouldn't say so. I think the weather's way better now than it looked, say, 12 hours ago. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at the uh, latest advisory now on Tropical Depression 5. Well, there it is. It doesn't look like a Tropical Depression. You could argue whether it was or whether it wasn't, who cares? But it's a 35 mile per hour system, sort of a, a wiggle along a frontal zone that had some thunderstorms with it, so what? But it did matter to areas that were experiencing some of the conditions with some gusty winds and some pretty heavy rains along the way. But the fact that it's moving northeast at 21 miles per hour is a good thing. That means it is exiting stage right from Bermuda, like that all the way, all the time. Let's have a look at the forecast now for TD5. Well, according to this forecast, it makes it to tropical storm strength. Good luck with that. There's no way in heck it looks like it when the satellite pictures are showing the way they do, that it's going to be a tropical storm. It's not likely anything near a tropical system, but it may be designated that in the next couple of days. We'll just have to wait and see. Otherwise, we've got a couple of circles out there. We've got an area to watch, believe it or not.
in the northern Gulf of Mexico. There may not be a whole lot of showers and thunderstorms right now, but it is indeed a place that the Hurricane Center said, you know what? I'm going to have a look at this thing. So did we. About a year, about a day ago, we had our eyes very squarely on this region with more and more showers and thunderstorms as part of a process by which not only do we have a frontal zone nearby, which if you're familiar with that, they can produce shifting winds and areas of low pressure, but also aloft. We've had some complexes of thunderstorms over the plains that have moved southward over the uh, northern Gulf Coast that have accumulated what's called vorticity or spin in the atmosphere. And those on top of a front make this definitely one place to watch going forward. I think we should indeed do that. Again, even though it doesn't look like much right now, check out the front that's right here. That helped TD5 spawn, by the way. And it's back edge with that trough of low pressure or a wind shift line, Paul. You know, those things can be squirrely this time of year. Pay attention. Yeah, and also pay attention to the impacts regardless of name. But this time around, we're adding more storms to the mix. And this is a pattern that will continue. I just don't see much change to it as we go through the next few days. But in the tropics, a late development here with our fifth named system of the season coming late tonight. This will be a short-lived system. Uh, this is Tropical Storm Edward, and we've got winds at 40 miles per hour, moving off to the northeast at 35 miles per hour. So it's short lived. It'll likely become uh, post tropical even as soon as we head into tomorrow afternoon and evening and it'll move into the North Atlantic. Now keep in mind, yes, we have five name systems in the book for this season. This season is anticipated to be above average, but these have not been very mature systems. They've all been f fairly small, relatively weak and short lived systems. We're not really into the heart of the season that comes as we get into August, September and October. There's a, an area that we're watching a little bit closer to home. It's across the northern Gulf Coast states. It'll move across North Florida, Southern Georgia, and then we'll watch it into the Western Atlantic over the course of this week with a 40% chance for development. So that's what's going on in the tropics. Otherwise closer to home trying to get rid of the rain showers that have been around for the bulk of the afternoon. We'll stay above average temperature wise through the middle portion of the week on the wetter side as storms that brew will drift slowly towards the west and then east. Now, as far as the tropics are concerned, we have Edward, a tropical storm in the middle of the ocean, not bothering anyone. Booking quickly to the northeast at 36 miles per hour it will likely fall apart either later today or tonight. And we are monitoring an area of low pressure that has moved inland around the panhandle of Florida. Once it moves off the coast of the Carolinas, that's where it could actually get organized either on Wednesday or Thursday. That's if the low moves back over the open waters. Then there's this wave producing this organized shower activity just to the east of the Windward Islands. It could produce pockets of heavy rain regardless of development and gusty winds starting tomorrow for some of those islands. Welcome back to Weather Center Live. We are keeping an eye on the tropics right now, and there is a tropical storm which is rapidly moving out across the northern part of the Atlantic. Tropical storm Edward, 45 mile per hour wind, and moving towards the northeast at 37 miles per hour, and that's pretty typical for storms that get to that latitude. This became the fifth named storm of 2020 on the 5th, earliest fifth named storm on record in the Atlantic basin. The previous record was Emily back in 2005 and this storm as you can imagine is just going to move out into the North Atlantic and is not going to be of concern to us. So as we look at the tropics in general right now there's a lot out there but none of it is strong. We're looking at all invest areas and areas to watch. Of course that can change very quickly but we don't expect that it will uh, certainly not so along the east coast. We are watching this invest area invest 98 L. There was a tiny little center of circulation that actually came on shore overnight in northwest Florida has now made its way up into central Georgia and what is left of that may emerge out near the coast of the Carolinas and then develop as it moves up and along the coast later this week. It's being given a 40 percent chance of doing that by the National Hurricane Center and so we do think that there is this chance that we'll see some redevelopment with this storm and it may be in our hair. It's probably not going to get real strong but it may be enough to generate some waves and certainly bring us some rain in these coastal areas. Deadly and dangerous, this chaser getting extremely close to a large tornado as it spun across Otter Tail County in Minnesota. 
The tornado tore through several farm homes. At least one person was killed and two others injured. Now, this was one of 25 reported tornadoes across the central U.S. yesterday, making it the most active tornado day since May. Crews will be out there today to rate the damage. Stormy times across the Midwest, the central U.S., and then we have a, another entity in the Atlantic, Chris. That's right, Julie. It is Invest 98L today, and that is what we're tracking, watching, and waiting for a possible designation as the sixth named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season here in the Atlantic Basin. And the National Hurricane Center is saying, yeah, there's a really good chance that's going to happen. 90% chance uh, is about as high as it can get uh, without actually being named here as far as the odds go of it being named. And uh, they're focusing now on the area just off of the Outer Banks. That's where most of the action currently is with this. By action, I mean that's where all the clouds are, and that's where uh, there is currently uh, quite a bit of rain, shower, and thunderstorm activity. Again, a 90% chance that this is going to develop, and if it does, and or when it does, somewhere in this red hatched area is the likely location. So there is this big blob right there. A lot of rain and thunderstorms associated with this. A pretty broad area of low pressure uh, within a broad area of counterclockwise swirl. There was some thinking that perhaps maybe that could be yet, but it does appear this is more likely the uh, spot they're focusing on because you're just not seeing a whole lot of activity. But there are some showers starting to pop up as that air is going from land back out over the very warm waters uh, of the Atlantic, at least this part of the Atlantic. Winds, though, blowing pretty good, gusting uh, here in uh, Beaufort, North Carolina, up to 23 miles an hour, Hatteras gusting to 22. Uh, these conditions over here where the winds are a little bit stronger, not as conducive for development and kind of tear apart the storms. Uh, but when you look at these areas where the winds higher up aren't quite as strong uh, and the waters are real warm, where you're seeing some of this development as well, a little bit more conducive, a more of a likelihood. Uh, this uh, area of low pressure operating in an environment uh, and over waters that both favor the development of uh, a tropical system here. And uh, through tomorrow, uh, we can expect more nasty weather, whether it is going to be some heavy rain or potentially some severe weather across parts of New England. Taking you through the overnight hours into tomorrow, uh, whether or not uh, it gets a name more trivial in some cases, uh, it just in the sense that you're going to get something anyways. You're going to get some rain. You're going to get some wind along the New Jersey coastline. Uh, over Long Island uh, and eventually into New England. That is the plan here. And we'll see uh, just the big wild card, whether or not it does uh, get a name, if it develops, uh, Julian, of course, uh, how much, uh, if it does intensify as well. So wind's still yet to be determined, but it looks like a pretty uh, sure thing that there's going to be some soaking rain. Yeah, I think you're right. And you know, Atlantic City is just one spot we're going to be watching closely as Invest 98L works its way up the eastern seaboard. Uh, clouds starting to build there over the beach this afternoon. Scene's going to change, though. It's still pretty nice out, right? Overnight, though, not the case. We can expect the heavy rain and the gusty conditions out there. And that's going to last really throughout the day tomorrow for you there in Atlantic City. NBC6 First Alert Weather, certified most accurate seven years in a row. All right, coming up in our next half hour, we will take a look at records that we set here today. One of the hottest days we have ever seen in Miami. But first, breaking weather news. Tropical Storm Fay has formed just off the coast of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. The winds are at 45 miles per hour. It is moving to the north. So the most important thing for us here in South Florida, zero effects from this storm. But New York City could take a direct hit this weekend. Notice where all the rain is on the dirty side of the storm. We have that counterclockwise circulation right here. So obviously for the cities of the Northeast, the farther east the storm goes, the better. That western track would mean that many cities are on the dirty side of the storm. And here is the latest track from the National Hurricane Center peaking out with winds of 50 miles per hour over the next 48 hours. Again, that westernmost track right here would take it over Philadelphia, and it would mean the dirty side of the storm at some point would be over New York and Boston, so that would be bad news. If it takes the easternmost track right here, that would spare Philadelphia and New York, but it looks like Boston would still be on the dirty side of the storm. Bottom line is, anywhere in this entire strip, all of New Jersey, 
Connecticut up toward New England, New York, Boston. These cities need to watch out and check it out. A tropical storm warning for all of coastal New Jersey. And then the waterways around New York got coastal Long Island on both the south and north shore and then up toward Connecticut and Rhode Island. So tropical storm conditions are likely over the next couple of days. And Dr. Nab, the former director of the Hurricane Center, is now a hurricane expert here at the Weather Channel. Let's dig into this, Dr. Nab. What did you see today? What did the National Hurricane Center see today that said, okay, this is now a tropical storm? Well, the aircraft data were really critical because on satellite, you can still tell that it's kind of an elongated, disorganized area of low pressure, but we started to see the center of circulation take shape on satellite. The good news for North Carolina is most of the bad weather is farther to the east, even though the circulation center is right here just off of Cape Hatteras. But North Carolina itself uh, catching a bit of a break, except for the high risk of rip currents that are in place today. So let's take a look at the new advisory from the National Hurricane Center. This is as of 5 p.m. Eastern time. It's a 45 mile an hour tropical storm. Again, most of that weather is offshore uh, to the east of the circulation center. Now the center itself moving off to the north at about seven miles an hour, and that is going to bring it along the mid-Atlantic coastline tomorrow. And it could even uh, make landfall sometime tomorrow. Uh, and don't just focus on where the center is going to be because we're going to have some bad weather leading it. Uh, tropical storm warnings are in effect now for Cape May, New Jersey, all the way through New York City, Long Island, Long Island Sound, coast of Connecticut as well. Now, today... We've got a high risk of rip currents along the coast of North Carolina. So even though, like I told you, the weather is not the worst it's ever been in a tropical storm on the coast of North Carolina, I don't want you getting in the water there. Could take your life. These rip currents can be very deadly. That risk will increase uh, farther to the north uh, as we go uh, into tomorrow and Saturday. Flash flood watches for a lot of the big cities of the northeast. Please turn around, don't drown. This is the highest risk hazard, I think, out of this storm. Now, again, this could be a relatively short-lived tropical storm because it's leaving its 80 degree waters here pretty soon uh, but going over you know waters that are in the mid 70s uh, to upper 70s it has enough fuel to sustain it as a tropical storm but not enough to become a hurricane certainly not enough to get much stronger than about 50 miles an hour but look at this this is tomorrow afternoon uh, so the center of circulation could be very near, if not coming ashore, in uh, New Jersey sometime in the p.m. hours tomorrow. So we've got tonight to get ready for it. And then this is not just going to be a coastal event. This is going to be an inland event for eastern New York up into uh, portions of New England. And because it's right loaded, you're going to have some of the weather outside of this cone as well. But Saturday night, it's up into Canada. So here's the lopsided storm as it is, leaving those Gulf Stream waters and moving northward. These waters are warmer than average just off New Jersey, so that's why it'll be a little bit more potent of a tropical storm uh, than we might uh, see in this time of year otherwise. But Jackie, I'm most concerned about this rainfall getting to land tomorrow. So just a quick look at the way the future radar looks. It's going to be arriving around Cape May, say tomorrow morning. So that's when the tropical storm conditions and the flood risk will be starting. Welcome back to our special coverage as rare tropical storm warnings are in effect for New York City tonight. Wind and rain from Tropical Storm Faye moving in tomorrow. It's going to be stepping up in the afternoon, but we think the worst of it is likely going to be very late tomorrow in New York City and then into early Saturday morning as well. And then here in Nags Head, North Carolina, live look there as the uh, surf is becoming increasingly elevated. The beaches are going to get a pretty good workout over the next couple of days. It's going to be a high risk for rip currents. Not that it's going to be a great day for the beach, but actually things will be improving in the wake of the storm. And so certainly you want to be uh, aware of that rip current threat uh, even after the storm is move up, moving off to the north. So tropical storm warnings now in effect along the Jersey Shore, Long Island, the tri-state area, and southern Connecticut. In all those areas, tropical storm force winds are expected. It's certainly going to be a very gusty afternoon and evening uh, moving up the coast. 45 mile per hour tropical storm right now. It is moving north at 8 miles per hour. And the low level center now a little displaced from where a lot of the weather is. So it's, you know, not terribly well organized. And on top of that, it's moving into increasingly 
cooler water. Tropical cyclones, as you know, they, dr they drive their energy from a very warm ocean water. And as the water's getting cooler, that's probably going to keep a lid on the intensity of the storm. So we think it's probably going to top out as a mid-grade tropical storm. 50 miles per hour is a pretty good bet. And then beyond that, it will move up uh, most likely uh, very close to New York City, perhaps right over New York City and then into the Hudson Valley and uh, on up towards uh, New England as well. And in the mountains there, we'll be concerned about the possibility of flooding. That will also be the case in those urban areas. So right now we're watching this big mass of rain offshore. And, it, you know, as you look at this thing, you see a little swirl right in there. And you, that, you might be tempted to think, well, that's got to be the center. That is actually a, what we call a mid-level center. So you've got a, a mid-level center that is detached from the low-level center. The low-level center is is farther to the south and the mid-level center is farther to the northeast. So there's this uh, tilt in the atmosphere between those two centers. That's pretty typical. Sometimes if you've got a really vigorous mid-level center, you'll see a new center developing underneath that and that is possible and that could change things a little bit in terms of the trajectory of the storm tomorrow. But uh, you know, generally we think it's gonna continue to be rather disorganized like this and we're gonna start to see more of that mass of rain near that mid-level center beginning to interact with the Delmarva overnight tonight and early tomorrow. It's not all that far offshore. If you look at this, I'm going to draw a little line here, uh, say from the edge of that heavier rain up to about Ocean City, Maryland. And so you're talking about, you know, 50, 60 miles away. It's not very far away. And so that's going to start to move in overnight tonight. The winds are going to be picking up overnight tonight. And then tomorrow morning, they're going to get pretty strong. Now, as we look well offshore here, this is looking way up. It, you know, as you get farther and farther away from the radar site, you're shooting higher and higher in the atmosphere because the Earth is curved and the, the curvature is tilting away from that radar beam. So we're looking at a height of about 20,000 feet in this case. But in those blue colors there, we're seeing some values that are over 60 miles per hour. So the winds are actually pretty strong around that mid-level center. And we think that some of that wind energy is going to be transferred down to the ground as these bands of rain come through into tomorrow morning. So this is a model forecast showing you how this is likely to play out. There you go. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, you've got winds stepping up to 40, 50 miles per hour in Ocean City, which, you know, is not a big deal if it's a relatively short-term thing, but it's probably going to go on for several hours. It's probably going to be through the morning into the early part of the afternoon. So that could be enough to bring down some tree limbs, some power lines. There could be some power outages. It is certainly not going to be a pleasant day there in Ocean City, nor in Rehoboth and farther north. There you go into 1 p.m., still going real strong there in Ocean City. The winds are starting to pick up in Atlantic City and then getting uh, stronger as we go through the afternoon. And then by very late tomorrow, some of that strongest wind is coming up right along the northern part of the Jersey Shore. So that gives you a sense of wind that's going to come into New York City. It's probably going to be really late tomorrow. And tomorrow night, it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult to sleep because you're going to hear the wind there in New York City. And again, it could be gusting uh, 30, 40 miles per hour there in New York City. And now your tropical update. Here's the latest advisory. A look from above. The latest forecast track. And also right now, let's take a live look at uh, Asbury Park right there in New Jersey, where Tropical Storm Faye continuing to just churn up the coast. So the biggest impact from the storm is going to be a lot of rain footfall, and that's expected to hit Virginia all the way up through New England, Sandra. That's right, and I mean, the big concern is going to be uh, flash flooding and those squalls and 50 mile an hour winds now with Tropical Storm Faye, which is east of Ocean City, Maryland, where we saw that live shot there, and uh, to the south of Cape May, New Jersey. So we're already seeing some fierce squalls that have just been pounding the eastern shore of Maryland all morning. 
Maine as well as the Delmarva Peninsula. Zooming in a little bit further, you can see up near Atlantic City, they're getting some strong thunderstorms associated with the counterclockwise spin as well. So it is definitely moving on up, and the actual core center of circulation will be somewhere at New New York at later on this afternoon and evening. So here's a look at the storm track, Tropical Storm Fay. It's the earliest we've ever seen the six name storm in a hurricane season, by the way. Still just shattering records as we go. North movement by uh, 2 o'clock or so. I mean, it's starting to make landfall, and it has 50 mile an hour winds now. So just a tropical storm, but is definitely going to cause some weather up there. Not an impact here, obviously. Well, some heavy rain from Tropical Storm Fay already causing major problems in New Jersey. You can check it out. This is the flooding in Avalon. Already more than two inches of rain has fallen around the area. The person who took this video says a few cars got caught trying to cross the street. And yeah, you know, we're preaching to the choir, I know, but we say it time and time again, you gotta turn around, go another route. It's just not safe. Well, tropical storm off the northeast coast in yeah, July. Yeah, it is happening right now. The latest that uh, hit that we're taking from 2020, the year that just won't end. Uh, the proof is in the pictures, though, as we look live here in on Cape May, New Jersey. Uh, not the brightest of times, that's for sure, although it looks like uh, there's a few folks that are getting out into the water. Probably not the safest thing to be doing right now uh, in and across the Jersey Shore. Well, half past the hour here for us as Weather Center Live rolls on. I'm meteorologist Alex Wallace, home for the day. Back in the studio, we have meteorologist Felicia Combs and our storm specialist, Dr. Greg Postel. Now, of course, the focus is on what's happening with uh, our tropical storm, Faye. And while it may not be a quote unquote major system, it's not something that we want to dismiss and just poo-poo because it certainly could be a dangerous situation for some. Uh, we certainly want to take it seriously. So let's bring in Dr. Postel to focus in on some of those threats that we're going to be facing over the uh, next day or so, uh, along with where this thing is headed. Yeah, it's closing in on the Jersey coast. The center is, but the worst weather is actually somewhat removed from that in kind of a northern semicircle. Right now, Tropical Storm Faye is a 50 mile per hour tropical storm, according to the Hurricane Center, moving north at 10. The center is uh, maybe a little bit north of there by now. We'll have a new update coming up here. Let's see. Let me get this there. Probably somewhere about there. The new update should be coming in about oh, 15 minutes or so, but uh, we don't expect much change. I don't think the overall projection for where the center is going to go over the next couple of days won't move much, I don't think. But keep in mind, uh, along the uh, sort of eastern side, or maybe even in this case, for now, the western side of that cone may be seeing quite, uh, quite a bit more impact than wherever the center is, because this is sort of an asymmetric storm, one where you can see the bad weather kind of uh, in that northern semicircle like that, and yet the center you can see very clearly on the satellite pictures right about there. How about that? The weather improves as the center approaches not that uh, sort of structural sort of association we think of when we think of a tropical cyclone. It usually gets worse all the way almost to the middle. This one has the weather distantly removed from where the center is. By the way, again, right about there. Atlantic City getting some showers now. The worst of the rain has moved to the northwest. But there is some very heavy rain and some thunderstorms rolling across the Pine Barrens of southern Jersey, moving toward Philly, going to be moving westward even from there into southeastern Pennsylvania. So this is a, a very significant rainmaker with the potential for flooding. Inland, the wind is not an issue. There's some pretty strong wind gusts along the coast. We're seeing gusts of 44 in Atlantic City right now, and that will probably be about the case for the next couple of hours. The amount of rain we've already seen, three to five inches in southern Jersey, and we'll see a lot more than that yet to come when you think of this forecast, because it will still rain across parts of eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, throughout the afternoon, also in southern New York State and parts of New England this evening and tonight. The wind, again, becoming even less and less of a factor as we go through this time period through tomorrow morning. It is the rain. It is the potential for flooding. That is the story with this landfall, eventually, of Tropical Storm Fay, and then moving off out of the picture later on tomorrow. The amount of rain yet to come, Alex, three to five inches, possibly New York City. Again, some of that coming down very heavily and very rapidly, so flooding going to be an issue throughout the day and tonight. Back to you. Yeah, Dr. Dow, to talking about some of those threats and some of the concerns where this thing may be headed here as well as we head on through the next day or two. Rain and the potential for flooding are the biggest concerns by far, Alex. I think you've been saying that all along uh, for the last couple of days. We have a, a tropical storm. In case you're tuning in just now, you might think, wait, 60 miles per hour, isn't that stronger than what it was earlier today? Yeah, the newest advisory um, came in and increased the wind speed from 50 to 60 miles per hour. It is also moving northward at 12 miles per hour instead of 10. So it's moving more quickly and a bit stronger than it was earlier this morning. Those are two 
few takeaways from that. But I would say that nobody's going to see 60 mile, mile per hour sustained winds inland or on the coast. The fastest winds we've seen uh, on the coast are about 40 miles per hour with gusts to 49 near Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, a couple of hours ago. But still, gusty winds for sure and heavy rain. The rain, again, the biggest threat. The center of circulation likely to move somewhere within that cone during the next, uh, say, 36 hours or so. Moving inland likely this afternoon and then carrying the rain with it very long distance inland on all sides, really, because if you look, there's a center of circulation. It's almost taken a northwestward jog. I don't know if that's a, a longer term trend or if that's just a wiggle, but we'll be watching it. But look at where all the rain and thunderstorms are. Asymmetrically distributed, meaning lopsided on the northern semicircle. So when the center goes through, at least if it holds this position or holds this structure, the better weather is soon to follow and likely the worst weather will be on its approach rather than on its departure. So there we go. There's the center of circulation, maybe uh, 30 miles or so southeast of Cape May, New Jersey. And overall, it is the rain that is just pounding New Jersey and southeastern Pennsylvania. Rainfall estimates so far are in the three to five inch range across the region. But look at the winds, really not much of an issue, especially once you get even off the coast and inland, even a few miles, the wind is not going to be a significant factor. That is roughly how much rain we've seen. There is the sort of rainfall estimates according to the radar, three to five in the yellow. Last graphic I'm going to show is the timing, how we move that rain from New Jersey and eastern Pennsylvania into New York State and New England. It is going going to be a rainy and breezy night tonight in some spots across parts of southern New England and tomorrow morning could be just the same in areas farther to the north. Alex back to you. Uh, and right now we want to get to uh, some of those warnings in just a moment. But first uh, the latest on this tropical storm. Yes, tropical storm Faye, the F storm here in uh, still relatively early uh, July. Uh, that's six named storms already here on this uh, Atlantic uh, hurricane season basin, uh, the Atlantic basin hurricane season. 60 mile an hour storm with a 2 p.m. update. Tropical storm Faye uh, pressure down to 998 millibars. Uh, so still strengthening a bit here as this system is expected to continue its northerly trek. The center of the storm is moving to the north at 12 miles an hour. Most of the heaviest rain is well away from the center. However, Unfortunately, in New Jersey, where you're closer to the center, that's also where there is some pretty heavy rain right now. And in fact, starting to see just in the past hour, a little bit more rain showing up closer to the center of this system. So wrapping around this with the winds, going to see more of the water being pushed into the Jersey Shore. Uh, and uh, for Atlantic City, the low tides around six o'clock. So this may be at least a little bit of good news here as far as the beach erosion, which is a major concern and coastal flooding. The high tide closer to midnight tonight. So uh, that's at least a little bit of something. Meanwhile, each uh, one of these little edges in through here is going to pack a little bit of an extra punch. Almost looks like ribs, like in a rib cage right there. Uh, bands of showers that are working on shore. Uh, here in Atlantic City, a rain is starting to pick up a little bit. Uh, here in New York City, some lightning and there is a flash flood warning, including a lot of northern New Jersey as well in the tri-state area with lightning associated with these storms. Heavy rain coming down, creating a flood situation. Just take a look at the scene in New York City uh, where it's uh, a little bit cooler here. Flash flood warning uh, in effect until 430 Eastern time uh, with more rain being pumped in that direction. Here's a look at some of the stronger winds closer to the center. Now winds gusting in Atlantic City to 37 miles an hour. So getting closer uh, to 40 miles an hour right now as more of this heavy rain is pushing uh, on shore. And even though there's not uh, much uh, rainfall associated with the center, it still uh, could cause some serious issues once it does get closer uh, to the shoreline and gets up. Uh, even if it takes this continuing this track, uh, we're going to see uh, the potential that we could get more rain associated with it, possibly some thunderstorms uh, going into the evening. And we turn now to the tropics where we are tracking Faye. The tropical storm is right now dumping heavy rain and flooding in parts of New Jersey. This is new video coming in from Ocean City. It is a mess, at least for the folks up there. Brian Norcross is joining us to talk about that system. Brian. Hey, Christy and Calvin. Yeah, in New York City, they're getting it right now. 
It's not the center of the storm in this case. It's kind of the outer band. Take a look here at the satellite picture and watch as we go close up in here and you can see where that center is. Look, it's really obvious and there's really not a heck of a lot of weather associated with that. It's this band in here, as it often is in kind of disorganized tropical storms, that cause the problem. On the radar, you see it really clearly. Look, the center's down there by Atlantic City. But right over New York City, boy, you can imagine what the commute is going to be like this afternoon. They're getting flooding rains. They have flash flood warnings in effect. Also over here, eastern Pennsylvania, Jersey, even though the center is over here by the Jersey Shore, the bad weather is uh, well to the north and to the west. Now, here's the rain total so far. Now, it's just beginning in the New York area, so not a whole lot as of these numbers. You see where it was concentrated down here, Delaware, Maryland, but these amounts in some spots are going to push seven inches, isolated spots, generally two to four there uh, through the northeast. All right, here's the track on the thing. There's the center as it's rotating around, watches the model, takes it to the north. It goes up into Canada by tomorrow night. So this is a fast mover, generally two to four inches, but isolated spots, and look at them, some right around New York City. They're saying up to seven inches in the forecast, but widespread heavy rain. So they're having a drought up in the northeast. So this isn't all bad unless they get it all in one place. As far as we're concerned, it's dust, dust, and more dust uh, into the middle of next week. But I want to take it seven days out. Now, things are iffy seven days out, obviously, but you notice a bit of a pocket in the dust here. The models are showing a pretty strong tropical wave coming along, more moisture, and maybe the pattern is starting to shift. You see a little bit of less dust here, and we expect that to happen as we move toward August. We'll keep our eye on Faye back in the next hour. Welcome in. We have special coverage for you tonight on Weather Underground Tropical Storm Faye. Just recently making landfall near Atlantic City, New Jersey. We have meteorologist Jackie Jarrison Studios, as well as a hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nabb. Dr. Nabb, the new advisories just come in. What are we learning? Well, the system has made landfall, and I'm gonna bring the graphic up again to make sure I can give you the latest. So the tropical storm, the center of it, when it crosses land, that is what we define as landfall, and it has just occurred. The center of tropical storm Fay making landfall on the coast of New Jersey, right at 5 p.m. Eastern time, essentially, plus or minus, you know, a few minutes uh, or seconds, uh, about 10 miles north northeast of Atlantic City, New Jersey. Now, again, you can tell by that infrared satellite imagery that the center of circulation right now isn't necessarily the center of action. Most of the weather off to the north and to the east. Maximum sustained winds at 50 miles an hour, and that's not necessarily occurring right near the center. Uh, some of that is uh, up to 150, 180 miles out to the east uh, is where the tropical storm force winds are occurring. And the central pressure at landfall was 998 millibars incidentally not all that far from where the center of Sandy came ashore uh, in 2012. Of course this is a very different kind of storm as it's moving northward at 14 miles per hour and with all that weather leading it and extending way away from the center a lot of you have had a really bad day already in Delaware and in New Jersey and up into New York City and eastern Pennsylvania up into Connecticut. The weather has gone downhill way in advance of the center of circulation. Now we we are losing uh, the southern end of these uh, tropical storm warnings here with the new advisory uh, south of Green Egg Inlet in New Jersey, but the rest of it is still in effect. So we've still got tropical storm conditions expected to continue or occur in uh, those large areas. And here's the new track and intensity forecast from the Hurricane Center. Uh, it's not going to retain this current intensity for too much longer. In fact, it's not going to be a tropical storm for too much longer, but it will be bringing some gusts winds and rainfall inland late tonight into tomorrow. But this time tomorrow, Mike, it'll be in Canada. Uh, and we bid adieu, right? Uh, thank you, Dr. Nav, for that. How about some of the images that we're getting? How about the flooding here at Bethany Beach in Delaware? Pretty intense winds early this morning as well, but we are going to potentially have some issues with rainfall flooding, with potentially right along the beaches, some coastal flooding, which we've got a perpendicular wind. But again, just be ready for these conditions for the remainder of the day as we work our way up through the northeast. As far as the flooding goes, Dr. Nav, we saw some, some brief flooding there. How concerned are you about that? Which locations are you worried about? Uh, still northern New Jersey, even in the New York City area, 
and eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, those are the areas that uh, I'm most concerned about in the near term. And it will be a problem uh, increasingly up in uh, southeastern and east central New York uh, overnight tonight. Uh, so let's take a look at the satellite and then we'll put the radar on top of it. And you'll see how much of the rain is so far removed uh, from the center of circulation. And the computer will catch up here eventually and we'll get to see it. Th this area is the, the part of the storm where the heavy rainfall and the flooding are occurring. And uh, you know, the, the center the, of the storm has a lot of dry air intrusion because of the middle upper levels uh, bringing that in. And it's just not raining all that heavily uh, in that area. Let me advance this over here. Uh, Heather, I'm gonna probably have to get you to advance my graphics for me if this won't cooperate. Let's see if it'll go. There we go. All right, so now you see where the rain is, okay? So much of it is far removed from the center of circulation. And we've had a lot of training showers, not a whole lot of lightning, but training showers and heavy rain in New York City, and there's still a flash flood warning in effect for New York City. It goes till 5.30 local time, and it hasn't quit raining yet, and even after that happens, we're gonna still have issues on the roads. Here are just some examples in the Tribeca area. This is from earlier this afternoon. Barclay Street in Manhattan was closed due to flooding between West Street and Greenwich Street. And you had issues uh, out on Long Island as well. Road closures. So if you come upon a road where water's covering the road or you come up to a barricade that says road closed, please don't drive around the barricades or into the water. That is the main way people could get into trouble in this situation. Welcome back to our special coverage as rare tropical storm warnings are in effect for New York City tonight. Wind and rain from Tropical Storm Faye moving in tomorrow. It's going to be stepping up in the afternoon, but we think the worst of it is likely going to be very late tomorrow in New York City and then into early Saturday morning as well. And then here in Nags Head, North Carolina, live look there as the uh, surf is becoming increasingly elevated. The beaches are going to get a pretty good workout over the next couple of days. It's going to be a high risk for rip currents. Not that it's going to be a great day for the beach, but actually things will be improving in the wake of the storm. And so certainly you want to be uh, aware of that rip current threat uh, even after the storm is move up, moving off to the north. So tropical storm warnings now in effect along the Jersey Shore, Long Island, the tri-state area, and southern Connecticut. In all those areas, tropical storm force winds are expected. It's certainly going to be a very gusty afternoon and evening uh, moving up the coast. 45 mile per hour tropical storm right now. It is moving north at 8 miles per hour. And the low level center now a little displaced from where a lot of the weather is. So it's, you know, not terribly well organized. And on top of that, it's moving into increasingly cooler water. Tropical cyclones, as you know, they, dr they drive their energy from a very warm ocean water. And as the water is getting cooler, that's probably going to keep a lid on the intensity of the storm. So we think it's probably going to top out as a mid-grade tropical storm. 50 miles per hour is a pretty good bet. And then beyond that, it will move up uh, most likely uh, very close to New York City, perhaps right over New York City and then into the Hudson Valley and uh, on up towards uh, New England as well. And in the mountains there, we'll be concerned about the possibility of flooding. That will also be the case in those urban areas. So right now we're watching this big mass of rain offshore. And, it, you know, as you look at this thing, you see a little swirl right in there. And you, that, you might be tempted to think, well, that's got to be the center. That is actually a what we call a mid-level center. So you've got a, a mid-level center that is detached from the low-level center. The low-level center is, is farther to the south, and the mid-level center is farther to the northeast. So there's this uh, tilt in the atmosphere between those two centers. That's pretty typical. Sometimes if you've got a really vigorous mid-level center, you'll see a new center developing underneath that, and that is possible, and that could change things a little bit in terms of the trajectory of the storm tomorrow. But, uh, you know, generally we think it's going to continue to be rather disorganized like this, and we're going to start to see more of that mass of rain near that mid-level center beginning to interact with the Delmarva overnight tonight and early tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's not all that far offshore. If you look at this, I'm going to draw a little line here, uh, say from the edge of that heavier rain up to about Ocean City, Maryland. And so you're talking about, you know, 50, 60 miles away. It's not very far away. And so that's going to start to move in overnight tonight. The winds are going to be picking up overnight tonight. And then tomorrow morning, they're going to get pretty strong. Now, as we look well offshore here, this is looking way up. It, you know, as you get farther and farther away from the radar site, you're shooting higher and higher in the atmosphere because the earth is 
curved and the, the curvature is tilting away from that radar beam. So we're looking at a height of about 20,000 feet in this case. But in those blue colors there, we're seeing some values that are over 60 miles per hour. So the winds are actually pretty strong around that mid-level center. And we think that some of that wind energy is going to be transferred down to the ground as these bands of rain come through into tomorrow morning. So we'll storm. That is absolutely correct. I think that's going to be one of the uh, things we remember this storm from was just uh, how far inland uh, some of the heaviest rain, some of the biggest problems, frankly, have been from this tropical storm, tropical storm Fay, that we are still tracking here on the Weather Channel. We'll continue to do so into the nighttime hours tonight, and we'll watch it again tomorrow as it is going to be well inland by tomorrow. But for now, Tropical Storm Fay, a 60 mile an hour storm that is moving to the north. The center is moving to the north at 12 miles an hour. This is the latest as of the 2 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Its track does and will take it uh, to the north eventually. By as early as this evening, we will see this storm uh, likely uh, making landfall and continuing its track uh, well inland and as it does, more heavy rain associated with some of the taller clouds that we are currently seeing right now. Can't rule out the chance that there's going to be tornadoes out of this. There is a, a Torcon of a, a two and a three. This is that uh, path, the cone of uncertainty. This shows us where the center is likely to go. The center of the storm likely to go somewhere in here. It could go right down the middle of this. This is based on history and the errors of uh, past uh, uh, forecasts. And so in time, uh, in history, the forecast has been wrong about that much and by about that much right there. So that being said, the storm could still go in either one of these ways. But the trajectory right now, I think does have pretty good confidence. I think that we're going to be going just pretty much due north as the forecast for the next several hours. But by tomorrow, either way you want to slice it, whichever track it takes, it will be in Canada by uh, late tomorrow. Here's that area of low pressure uh, that does appear to have more rain associated with it closer to the center of circulation. But Jennifer, this has been the main deal, a lopsided storm to the north and to the east. But what's happening here in the east, all this moisture is being pumped into some heavily populated areas here in the northeast, causing some issues. Well, the storm station is tracking tropical storm Fay, which has made landfall near Atlantic City, New Jersey. Reporter Laura Ingle is in New York where they're feeling its effects. Frankly, if you don't have to travel, uh, don't travel. Tropical storm Fay making its way up the East Coast Friday, getting ready to pack a punch. 20 million people are reportedly under a tropical storm warning issued from Cape May, New Jersey, all the way up to New Haven, Connecticut. Forecasters are predicting between three and five inches of rain and wind gusts up to 60 miles an hour in some places. Flooding is a major concern and could already be seen Friday morning in parts of southern New Jersey, where the storm is expected to make landfall. A flash flood warning was issued for parts of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware until Friday evening. I've seen images of cars floating right now in South Jersey. As with any storm of this kind, we ask you to use common sense to keep yourself and your family safe. Tropical Storm Fay is expected to move out of the region sometime Saturday, and Governor Murphy is encouraging residents to stay inside if they can until then. Today is going to be a washout, and I think into the early hours of tomorrow. So let's all just stay in and have some storm-induced social distancing. While the storm is not expected to be especially strong, President Trump has assured that a federal response is at the ready if needed. We are on the watch. We are fully prepared. FEMA is ready in case it's bad. Shouldn't be too bad, but you never know. The storm has caused the president to postpone his Saturday rally in New Hampshire. A new date has not yet been announced. In New York, Laura Engel, 7 News. Let's take you to Hackensack, New Jersey. Some new video to share with you, uh, courtesy of the fire department there. And Carolina, this is a concern. A lot of people look to be stranded in those flooded roadways. That is not what you want to see. And a lot of these areas, they tend to get a lot of tourists during the summertime, and they might not know just how deep that water is. Even locals, it's easy 
easy to misjudge the depth. You do not want to have to get rescued. It puts your life in danger, but it also puts the lives of those coming to rescue you in danger as well. Of course, all of that rainfall coming from Tropical Storm Faye, as we've been watching as it's making its way up the north coast, just near New York City right now, currently moving to the north at 14 miles per hour, sustained winds up to 45 miles per hour possible at the strongest point of the storm. This is our forecast path that the National Hurricane Center has put out, maintaining tropical storm force, but then slowly decreasing. And while it's decreasing in strength, it's going to be speeding up rapidly, making it to Montreal as a remnant low pressure system. That's going to be Saturday evening. And by Sunday, that's when we're going to start to see Faye really starting to dissipate. All we can do is hope and pray here in Florida that it doesn't, a storm doesn't hit us like that, especially during a pandemic. That is uh, what we absolutely do not need this season. Keeping an eye on it for us, as always, James yeah. Whelan. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, this season is supposed to be extra active, so hopefully none of them uh, will come towards us. So far, I think we're uh, six for six here, of at least affecting land, if not coming right on land. And here we got uh, the center is right here approaching New York City. But all the bad weather well displaced from the center here. Uh, this is the APM advisory, still 45 mile per hour winds racing off to the north at 14 miles per hour. And the forecast has it lasting till about tomorrow night and then this will be history. So again, another very short-lived storm here. Here are the rain bands uh, moving up uh, into Nantucket and Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, Connecticut still, and the bulk of it here into, well, New York and Pennsylvania here too, and uh, starting to come out of Jersey there. Not seeing a ton except for Northern Jersey, still some gusty winds there. And that is the sound of Tropical Storm Faye spreading heavy rain and strong winds in Seaside, New Jersey today. And we're looking for some additional gusty wind tonight. That's going to be about the only lingering impact from the storm. And here is a live look at the New York City skyline. This is a courtesy of EarthCam. Uh, this has been a really interesting shot tonight. There's actually, if you look really, really closely here, and you watch the buildings, you see that sort of an artifact that's occurring. Obviously, there's some shaking going on, but uh, it's not moving all of the buildings together at the same time. And, uh, you know, maybe there's somebody that knows something about video that could explain this to us, but I I've never seen anything like that. A very interesting effect, certainly. And you see the low clouds there as well. And we've got, uh, you know, a little bit of wind out there tonight, but not much because the center of circulation is actually passing just to the west of New York City. So this core of the storm is now coming through. And I'll tell you, if the core had held together, we'd be talking about a really different night right now, but it didn't. What happened was it just fell apart as drier air wrapped into the system. So it's really taking on some non-tropical characteristics right now. 40 mile per hour storm moving north at 17 miles per hour. And we expect that it will continue to rapidly lift up through the Hudson Valley and then into Canada. There you see the lingering tropical storm warnings that are in effect along Long Island from East Rockaway uh, all the way out to uh, Rhode Island there. And then also along Long Island Sound and in southern parts of Connecticut. So that's where we may continue to see some pretty gusty wind tonight. Uh, here you see the water vapor imagery and that area of orange right there is where the drier air has been wrapping into the system. And so, you know, a purely tropical system is one in which you've got warm and humid air around all of the system and thunderstorms bubbling up in the middle of the circulation. And a non-tropical system is one in which you've got, you know, competing air masses and you've got a lot of the worst weather away from the center of circulation. And this was more like option two, where we saw all the weather coming in through the middle of the day in the afternoon, well out ahead of that center. And you know, now as the drier air has really wrapped into the center and the center has been over land for several hours, everything just kind of fell apart here. And this is you know, what we've got right now is just uh, a few lingering showers, some gusty wind, certainly that's gonna be the lingering impact wind coming in off the ocean into Long Island, some heavier rain in some parts of Pennsylvania and New York, but uh, you know, not a huge problem tonight and uh, no flash flood warnings at this time. So as I mentioned, New York is calm. 
Right now, Islip gusting to 29 miles per hour. Toms River gusting to 24 miles per hour. We've got uh, a southwesterly wind here coming around the underside of the circulation. And in the modeling for tomorrow, uh, just not a whole lot of rain from the tropical storm. But we are going to see most likely some thunderstorms popping up in New York City. There's actually a front that's going to be coming through. Very strong southerly winds out ahead of that. And then an upper low that is also going to be coming through. And with that upper low, we're going to see some stronger thunderstorms developing in western New York State and Pennsylvania. That will come across the interior of the Northeast. So it's going to be another sort of unsettled day tomorrow, uh, and maybe even some lingering showers into the evening. But for the most part, in New England, uh, not too bad of a day at all. And in fact, let's take a look at the forecast in Burlington for tomorrow. Uh, some spotty showers and storms into the afternoon and winds gusting between 20 and 25 miles per hour. You know, we are done with Faye essentially. The worst of the weather has now moved away from many of us in the Northeast, moving into parts of Canada. The final advisory was issued earlier this morning at five o'clock as a post-tropical storm. Uh, it lost its tropical characteristics very quickly. It may never have had all of them together to begin with. Uh, it may have been more of a hybrid storm based on its appearance. And certainly when you look at the satellite pictures now, uh, it doesn't look like your standard system that comes out of the tropics. So let's have a look at um, some of the stats from yesterday's landfall. Five o'clock, landfall 10 miles north, northeast of Atlantic City, New Jersey. Winds 50 miles per hour, pressure 998. I can say that because I was, I grew up in New Jersey. One of my favorite states. Anyway, there is the track of uh, Fay as it moved inland just north of ACY and just south of, uh, let's see, Barnegat Light. And notice that it doesn't or it didn't have a lot of rain and bad weather right near the center. That tells us that perhaps there were some other factors here involved that maybe uh, helped it to not really have that traditional appearance of a tropical system, which would have had the bad weather right near the middle of it. The uh, rain and often the strongest winds in this case were on the northern periphery, semicircle of that uh, sort of area of weather moving northward. But... The impacts didn't matter. We got a lot of rain. Look at this. Almost seven inches across parts of Delaware, also in New Jersey. Lots of reports of four to six inches. The wind gusts were generally in the 40 to 50 mile per hour range. There were some higher than that and a few even higher than this. This is not a complete rundown, but the idea is that we did see some wind gusts way over 40 miles per hour. And uh, for the most part, those were relegated to those coastal sections. So. Faye, remember, the sixth name storm, the earliest on record, and it in fact beat the fifth earliest name on record as well. That's how early in the game we are, and that's how rapid a start we are, we are in this uh, season, at least in terms of the number of name storms. I'll talk more about that coming at 50 past the hour. But with all those superlatives and the unprecedented nature of some of the aspects of what we've seen uh, with this season in general, and Faye, we'll have a look in July. If you're going to get it in the record book, say it's happened before and it's happened most often in those locations. So there's some regularity thrown in to this kind of a weird mix. Dr. Postel. Well, you know what? It's been quite the start to the hurricane season. We have a record setting pace with the earliest F name storm on the record. And that was Faye. That is a remarkably hot start to the 2020 season. This has been an unbelievable really run of things and the atmosphere has allowed all of it to happen so very quickly and you got some video on there showing you look at that some hurricanes from 2005 so that begs the question if you think about 2005 that's the benchmark kind of in recent memory of the most active seasons right and uh, what we've got so far this year is a season that is ahead of 2005 pace in the number of named storms 2005 didn't get to their f storm until uh, july 21st this year, we've already gotten that, and that's the pattern that we've seen so far in 2020. But if you want to go back and you want to look at some of these records that we've set this year, earliest, we've had the earliest third name storm. We've had the second earliest fourth, the earliest fifth, and the earliest sixth. This is a remarkably, remarkable beginning to 2020. But going back and looking at 2005, 2005, the year that broke all the records, where we ended up with 15 hurricanes and seven major hurricanes, and we're ahead of that? What does that mean? If we're ahead of this pace, 
Well, there's a huge difference in here because by this time in 2005, while we didn't have as many name storms, we already had three hurricanes basically by July 13. So 2005, the atmosphere was supportive of bigger and stronger hurricanes by this point than we are now. We've seen a bunch of them, but they haven't really been that strong. And let's have a look at where we typically get the strongest of all the tropical cyclones. Going back in the entire record, going back all the way to the middle of the 1800s, as best we can do this, right? August and September, those are the months when you get the vast majority of those big time hurricanes. The hurricanes and the cat threes and fives also here, the vast majority of all of them have happened in the months of August and September. Just for example, September, out of all those cat threes, fours and fives that we have in the books, Almost half of them have occurred in that one month alone. So it's kind of backloaded in that way, right? The hurricane season oftentimes offers up smaller, less intense storms early on, but then it's by late August and September, that's really when we see the big ones. So let's look at what we've got right now across the region. No tropical storm formation in the Atlantic in the next five days. That's really good news. And we have lots of reasons for that. But one of the main reasons, I think, is because the atmosphere is generally pretty stable across this region. And in fact, more stable than average. Now, often, you know, it's a bit too early to look for tropical development really in this part of the world already. But we have an atmosphere that's very stable that's not allowing much to happen anyway, regardless. But there is an ominous sign, and I showed this yesterday. When you look at the sea surface temperatures related to average across the Atlantic Basin, we're pretty much above average almost everywhere. And that pattern that we've got now matches up, Paul, with the most active of the hurricane seasons on record. As last week ended, this is a scene that you saw time and time again along the Jersey Shore. Streets filled with water, like here in Sea Isle, the result of heavy rain from what was Tropical Storm Fay. And it wasn't just seaside communities that faced flood trouble. This is Newark, New Jersey, that had record rainfall courtesy of Fay. You couldn't tell where the streets ended and where the sidewalks began here. So Faye brought somewhere between about three and six inches of rainfall to parts of New Jersey, especially in about the southern half of the state. And if you hit five o'clock happy hour on Friday and tuned out over the weekend, you kind of missed it altogether. So here's a little recap for you of what we had uh, from Faye. It made landfall at five o'clock Eastern time on Friday, July 10th, 10 miles to the north northeast of Atlantic City, New Jersey. Maximum winds were 50 miles per hour and the pressure just under a thousand millibars. Here's a look at the visible satellite and you could really see uh, that center of circulation as that swirled in and moved in just to the north of Atlantic City. This brought the gusty winds, this brought the heavy rain and just an interesting fact for you uh, that the last three tropical systems that made landfall in New Jersey all made landfall within a couple of miles of each other. Isn't that incredible, Faye? We had Sandy in 2012, of course, and Irene back in 2011. Right now, the tropics are fairly quiet. Overall, no development expected into the Atlantic over the next five days. That's the good news for you. We've got the remnants right here of what was Christine in the Eastern Pacific, and then we've got a new area of investigation, uh, 98E, but right now, 98E, not expected to bother anybody as it tracks off towards the west. Tevin? Otherwise, all this moisture that you find right here, that is associated with the tropical wave that the National Hurricane Center is keeping a close eye on. No, um, in the next couple of days, it will cross to the south of us. For us, all we need to worry about is it will be a potential rainmaker. It's not until it reaches this area shaded in yellow where the National Hurricane Center feels that possibly we could see some development. Closer, to, uh, also close to home over the Gulf of Mexico, the National Hurricane Center is now keeping an eye on this area of low pressure that developed in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. It is forecast to move inland across Texas by tonight into tomorrow, so development chances will also remain limited. There's another area, a third one over the Atlantic waters at the National Hurricane Center is now keeping an eye on. I'll go, this one has a low development chance for the next two to five days. It's battling a lot of dry air over the Atlantic. Jim, I heard you wowing over there. I was just as amazed by that highest yeah, that pressure was, that ever was taken. Amazing. I literally said, are you guys sure? This is crazy. One of my biggest wows though at the Weather Channel was yeah. sitting right next to John Hope, the grandfather of the Weather Channel, mm -hmm. and when he saw the 888 millibars Gilbert. come in from the plane during Gilbert. Yeah. That's exact. He looked at me, his, he couldn't believe it. Uh, yeah. But I'll never forget that moment. Um, God, do I miss that man.
Uh, all right, so let's talk about what's going on here. Tropical wave working its way through Florida and the Keys. Winds gusted at 50 miles per hour in the upper Keys. The lower Keys have had some 40 mile per hour gusts. NHC now at 40% this develops. And remember what happened yesterday with 90L. Okay, all, hey, all of a sudden it kind of ramped up. Same kind of low level vorticity and spin coming into play here. A much deeper moisture surge. So by the weekend, expect heavier rain at the very least with this uh, as it moves through. I don't think it'll be anything super strong, but we will watch. And you can almost kind of see a little twisting going on and through here. Uh, so, you know, maybe it's trying to get itself uh, organized. But right now we don't have any kind of center of low pressure to, uh, to talk about. All right, so 90L is on shore near Port Lavaca this morning. All right, but I want to show you the vorticity of the low-level spin associated with this. I mean, you can see from the model standpoint, it's got something here in the Central Gulf. I mean, here we are Thursday, Friday, looks a little bit more intense potentially. So these things can spin up pretty quick. We'll keep an eye on it uh, again as it works its way toward Corpus Christi. And that brings in a tropical storm uh, as we work our way toward the weekend here. Uh, again, rainfall is going to be very heavy, especially if this thing gets itself organized. So one to two inches could easily turn into five to eight. Just keep that in mind uh, as we work our way to the weekend. Now, we may already have a depression on our hands out and through here. The scatterometer wind satellite went right over the top of this thing and found a, a, a beautiful circulation right where the deep convection is. So it's sitting at about 9 north, 39 west. Look at the visible. Kaboom. Nice little spin going on out and through here, working its way again off toward the west. Uh, what's interesting is most of the reliable guidance does not really ramp this up. All right, some of it does, but it stays low enough, again, away from the shear, and it certainly looks like it's going to bring some showers uh, and some thunderstorms into the Windward Islands as we work our way in toward this weekend. What it becomes from there, you'll notice the model kind of dissolves it out by the time we get in toward Monday, but we'll watch it, and there's yet another disturbance behind that. So is this the ramp up of the tropics. Time will tell. Well, right now we are keeping our eye on a tropical wave in the Florida Straits. Yeah, apparently uh, that's having some impact here in South Florida. Hurricane specialist Brian Norcross is live in Miami Beach with more on this. Brian. Hey guys, uh, yes, and we have a new tropical depression just named by the National Hurricane Center way out in the Atlantic. It is not going to be a threat to South Florida, but it's another one in this super busy year, so it sets a record for as uh, the earliest to have tropical depression number seven. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on out there. You see, number one is what you were talking about, is this uh, disturbance here that's been bringing some really heavy rain in some parts of South Florida today. Luke's been talking about it. And this is the new tropical depression, uh, system number two out there way in the deep tropics. First of all, what's going on with us? Look at the circulation. It's actually way over here, and it's dragging this moisture over us. Going to kind of continue to do that. So off and on moisture, as I said, Luke has that in the forecast and some pretty good downpours. You see this extends all the way down into the Caribbean. It's heading into the Gulf of Mexico. National Hurricane Center has a 40% chance of it developing at least into a tropical depression here over the next few days before it gets to the Texas coast. So we're keeping an eye on that because that is heading in the direction of Texas and Louisiana. Okay, out we go to the new tropical depression. There it is. You see it's got a pretty good circulation with it. It's about 1,420 miles from the southern Caribbean islands out there, so a long way out. Here's where the spaghetti models take it. You see they take it into the islands, but here's the news on this. The conditions in here are kind of favorable for it to strengthen. Hurricane Center brings it up to a strong tropical storm, not to a hurricane, but it uh, may come close. And then they become much less favorable when it gets near the island. So the thinking is it's going to weaken. When they're little like that, they can intensify quickly and die out quickly. So exactly how strong it's going to be when it gets there uh, toward the weekend is a little uncertain at this point. But everybody in the southern Caribbean islands needs to keep a close eye on that. Watch as we track Number one, number two, and the dust, because more dust is coming, and that's going to keep things all to our south if they uh, move at all. And look, the uh, computer models are bringing another round of dust to us uh, over the weekend. So good news is all the tropics, anything that happens has got to stay south of that dust because, of course, the dust just kind of dries everything out. All right, that's your news for this hour. Back next hour. See you then. NBC6 First Alert Weather, certified most accurate seven years in a row. 
Hi, everybody. Uh, waves of rain have been affecting parts of South Florida, especially the Florida Keys, where it's been pretty much a washout for the Keys. Also, several showers in Miami-Dade County. Let's start off with this broad satellite picture, which shows to the left the reason for our rains, a tropical wave in Cuba and heading into the Gulf of Mexico. And then t on the lower right, a new tropical depression, a tropical depression number seven, way, way, way out there, midway between Africa and the Lesser Antilles. The most important thing about this system is the time of the year in which it has formed. It is not common for us to see tropical depressions or storms form in the main development region of the Atlantic so soon in hurricane season. Normally, this is a mid-August occurrence, not a mid-July occurrence, so uh, certainly consistent with the many forecasts that we've heard for what's expected to be a, a hyperactive hurricane season, unfortunately, and it already is. As a matter of fact, if this becomes Gonzalo, uh, that's the next name, uh, before the 24th, today being the 21st, uh, well, it would be the earliest G storm on record, even surpassing the year 2005 when we had so many storms. So the easterly wave that's near us is moving into the Gulf of Mexico while that TD7 formed. We'll still see numerous showers because of the tropical wave that's affecting us now. And uh, then between uh, this one and the next batch of moisture, we will see some drying. But look at how the Florida Keys continue to get rained on right now as waves of showers and storms move through parts of Miami. Dade County as well. And there's more to come. There are more showers behind this, and you can expect a wet weather tonight and parts of tomorrow. Temperatures in the low to mid 80s across South Florida right now uh, held down by the rain. Plenty of moisture still to come, as you can see here on the water vapor satellite image. First 11 all eyes on a tropical depression that's expected to intensify as it heads towards the Caribbean. Good evening. I'm Todd McDermott. Thank you for joining us tonight. We go to our severe weather expert, Mike Lyons. Mike, the storm has already become a real challenge for forecasters. That's because of the storm size, Todd. Really a pickle tonight for forecasters of the National Hurricane Center. Tiny tropical systems like this one really can fluctuate quite a bit in intensity. For example, one computer model suggests that tropical depression number seven could become a category two hurricane. Another model, on the other hand, suggests the system could fall apart in the next couple of days. The good news tonight, the system, as you can see, is here in the middle of the ocean. But again, it is such a small storm. The intensity forecast remains a challenge. The forecast track, not a challenge at all. Pretty straightforward. We'll show you that in a second. At the moment, winds are 35, moving west-northwest at 9. Here's the forecast from the Hurricane Center. Again, a steady west movement for the next two or three days, gradually getting a little bit stronger as you can see with winds by Friday morning up to about 65. Then the storm approaches the Caribbean. This is the area to watch as we head toward the weekend. At the moment, the Hurricane Center saying a weak tropical system winds about 50 miles per hour as we get more new data into the computer models. The forecast should be much more fine tuned as we head toward the next couple of days. For us, thankfully, no threat at home. We are tracking the tropics this morning and what could become the next named storm of the hurricane season. And closer to home, a live look outside our North Bay Village studios on this Wednesday morning. Let's get started with a check on our weather today. Yeah, meteorologist Vivian Gonzalez back in the flex and she has your first forecast. Hi, Viv. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to be back after some uh, time off in South Florida. We are waking up to some unsettled conditions, so make sure that you grab the umbrellas, have any sort of rain gear on hand because you will be encountering pockets of heavy rain from time to time and even a thunderstorm or two. Later today, some of the winds uh, will be pretty strong with the activity that develops. And today in the tropics, we're monitoring a wave and tracking tropical depression number seven that is likely to become tropical storm Gonzalo later today. Now here is where that tropical depression is located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean well removed from the United States about 3,000 miles and this one 35 mile per hour winds moving to the west northwest at 12 and likely to approach the windward islands as we move on into Saturday second half of the weekend emerge into the Caribbean Sea if it manages to survive Hispaniola Puerto Rico Jamaica definitely need to closely keep an eye on that. 
that one. Now, the reason for the rain here at home is due to a wave that is now located in the Gulf and the Hurricane Center is keeping tabs on it, giving it a 40% chance in forming in this shaded area in orange through the next five days. Closer to home, though, seeing some gusty downpours already in Miami-Dade County and moving into the upper Florida Keys. Your full forecast is coming up in 15 minutes. As we look up and out, you can see all the moisture sitting just to our south and that that or that uh, wave continuing to bring uh, all of it into our backyard. So we're still for the next couple of days going to see the added moisture with us. That goes for the rest of your afternoon. You can see the scattered showers and a few thunderstorms on our future tracker as we go through uh, the evening hours. Even we'll still be watching for those and then we'll do it all over again as we head into tomorrow. So about that tropical wave, it does have 50% chance of development. We could be talking about uh, uh, an increase in, in intensity here as we go through the next couple of days. It's in those warm Gulf waters, so it does have a 50% chance of developing there. We're also talking about uh, a tropical storm. So Gonzalo formed, gained some steam, right now has winds of 50 miles per hour, moving west at 14 miles per hour. It will become a hurricane, a Category 1 hurricane here in the coming days as it takes aim at the southern Windward Islands and continues its trek to the west. We'll be monitoring it. It looks like it goes from 70 miles per hour peak to 45 miles per hour by Monday. So something to definitely keep an eye on as we go into the next couple of days. At this time, we're not looking at a threat for South Florida. Welcome back into the Weather Channel. Let's get you straight to the tropics. We want to start in the East Pacific because we've got our first hurricane of the season, which is actually running behind schedule. Um, it's the fourth latest we've seen a hurricane develop here in the East Pacific. It's Hurricane Douglas. If you look at the latest model runs, you're actually or satellite runs, you're seeing a little bit of an eye form there. Okay, so 75 miles per hour, pressure down to 993. It's racing off towards the west at 15 miles per hour, and it does bring Hawaii in play. In fact, a strength Strengthening hurricane likely getting up to category two sometime tomorrow, heading into Friday. By the weekend, look at this Sunday early morning, we start to see some of those outer bands approach the Hawaiian Islands. Now we may see a shift north or south with this track, so we want to pay close attention, but we're running out of time. We've got about three to four days here before we see direct impacts in the Hawaiian Islands. And the models are picking up on that. What you're looking at, this is Douglas, okay? This is the Europeans' latest run, and you can see how this tracks towards the Big Island and Maui as we head into Sunday and Monday of next week, potentially even a direct hit. At that time, though, it does appear to be weakening. Uh, still a strong tropical storm or weak hurricane. Now, closer to home in the lower 48 and the Gulf of Mexico, we're keeping an eye on this cluster of thunderstorms. This is our Invest 91L. The odds now have been raised to 80% chance of development over the next 48 to 72 hours. You can see this, especially as it moves into the Western Gulf. It's moved fairly quickly. It's been in, uh, in interacting with harsh environmental conditions, especially with strong winds aloft, but that's going to subside and we will see those rain bands kind of spreading out a lot of intense tropical moisture returning to the northern Gulf Coast that includes you in New Orleans heading into tomorrow and then notice how that flash flood risk shifts off towards the Texas coast by Friday and Saturday and some of the models potentially putting down quite a bit of rainfall by the end of the week. Jackie. So we're now on the east side of that area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico. Now a depression still dragging a lot of moisture across South Florida. The heaviest of the rain coming down across the lower Florida Keys. And there's still a train of rain lagging behind. That'll be moving in over the next 90 minutes to two hours. Now because of all the heavy rainfall, from mile marker three down to mile marker zero, a street flood advisory is in place until 1245 in the morning. So we have a brand new tropical depression as of 11 p.m. Tropical depression eight, 30 mile per hour winds over 500 miles away from Port O'Connor, Texas. The forecast cone takes the system all over these oil platforms. It could become a tropical storm during the day on Thursday and then make landfall somewhere across coastal Texas on Saturday, eventually raining itself out over interior portions of Texas. This will be a big rain event. Already, a tropical storm watch is in place for coastal Texas. In the middle of the Atlantic, we have tropical storm Gonzalo, 60 mile per hour winds. It's a very small system. It will continue to track west, being pushed along by high pressure, feeding off of some very warm waters. It could become a category one during the day tomorrow, but then weaken as it moves over the Windward Islands. If it survives, 
it looks like it makes its way into the Caribbean Sea, and that's when everyone there will have to watch it very carefully. Barbados under a hurricane watch as of 11 p.m. We did get the updates, though, for both uh, Tropical Storm Gonzalo, which they kept it as a tropical storm, and, and, and I would say that's a good call. The winds have not increased. In fact, if we're looking honestly at the satellite, it looks like it has somewhat weakened this morning than what we were dealing with yesterday. And we also have the latest update in on Hurricane Douglas, which is still a major hurricane, and that's the one I want to start with. We also did just get the latest update in for Tropical Depression 8, and they upped the winds to 35 miles per hour. That's the only only difference, still not a tropical storm. All right, so here's a look at Hurricane Douglas as of the 5 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time advisory. Major hurricane, 120 miles per hour. The difference is, look at the forward speed west northwest at 20 miles per hour okay and it's about 1300 miles away from the big island you do the math we're within two and a half to three days away from impacts here all right so we got to watch this very closely here's a latest look at the european model you can see hurricane douglas there still holding together even as it moves over some cooler waters and it does take it right over parts of the big island and maui impacting then oahu honolulu and maybe even holding together as it emerges on the west side of the island chain. So we got to watch this. We know rainfall will be a big issue. Some of the latest forecasts calling for maybe upwards of two feet of rain. Remember, the Hawaiian Islands are very mountainous, so they're going to be able to squeeze out a lot of moisture. We do know, though, that we will see weakening because look at the water temperatures here. They're in the 60s and 70s. So as it pulls away from that warmer water that it's been in, we will see that speed come down as far as winds. But still, Saturday morning, we have a 100 mile per hour storm less than 500 miles away from Hawaii, and it may stay hurricane status. And that's the latest forecast as it approaches the Big Island and areas like Maui. So there's a look at the European rainfall totals somewhere between a foot to two feet of rain, and that's comparable to the GFS, especially with the uh, middle islands from Oahu down to Maui taking the brunt of some of the heaviest rainfall. Now we jump over to Tropical Depression 8 to the latest advisory in, and again, winds have come up now to 35 miles per hour. That's with some of those blow up of thunderstorms that we're starting to see. And again, the forward motion of this is about nine miles per hour and now less than 400 miles away from the Texas coast, at least from Port O'Connor. The latest track still slowly developing this. We may not see this get named perhaps until tomorrow, so it'll be slow uh, to strengthen. But once we get a better consolidation of thunderstorms near the core and you get those winds uh, to be more closely uh, tightly knit, um, we'll have a better op opportunity for strengthening. They did slow this down, though, so that's going to up our rainfall potential, especially in central and west Texas, where Rain is actually a good thing here because uh, we could use it, Alex, some area of Texas in drought and we will see several inches. So sometimes tropical entities like this that aren't super strong, they do provide some beneficial rains. Yeah, we'll certainly be keeping an eye on that, uh, no doubt about it. Then, of course, we're, we've got what's going on in the uh, far reaches of the Atlantic with our uh, tropical storm Gonzalo. And you see it there showing up right in the middle of your screen. Uh, not the most organized tropical storm, that is for sure, as we've seen it here lately, not looking very, very healthy. But nonetheless, still a tropical storm, 65 mile per hour winds with the latest advisory moving to the west at 14 miles per hour. Now, this thing's going to be getting and moving into uh, the eastern parts of the Caribbean Sea. Now, you notice the satellite view of the last several days, not a whole lot of activity in that zone. And generally, that's an area here that is considered the sort of graveyard when it comes to uh, tropical systems here. You got a lot of strong winds in the low levels at this time of the year. And you also are talking about a general sinking motion in the atmosphere, which does not promote a whole lot of thunderstorm development. So that can really help preclude systems from really developing in these areas. Again, this is typically what we see as we work our way through the mid and latter part of July. So looking at at tropical cyclone origins at uh, the latter part of July. Yeah, you don't see much showing up there in the eastern parts of the Caribbean, and even the ones that form outside of that zone don't seem to make a, a whole big run. But we'll be watching this. There are always exceptions to the rule. To the south over the Keys. All right, let's get to work on the tropics. This is Tropical Depression 8 in the Gulf of Mexico. Hurricane Hunters went out. They checked it out earlier. It looks good on satellite, but not quite the tropical storm strength yet. I'll bet you later on this evening. It's close. I'll bet you this evening we have Tropical Storm Hannah.
Montana out of this with winds up to around 40 miles per hour or so. And that's what's in the forecast is some gradual strengthening, not likely to rapidly strengthen, but nonetheless a strong tropical storm as it approaches the Texas coast later on into the weekend. Big threat here with this not only would be the tropical storm force winds, but probably more so flooding. I mean, wherever it uh, gets near, it's not just the center, it's all through the Texas coast. Flooding rain will be possible. Okay, here's Gonzalo. Gonzalo really took it on the chin today with some drier from the north. On satellite, it has not looked good, but it's not done fighting yet. Still taking some gas and starting to sputter back up a little bit. So point is, both the depression and this storm are small and not all that organized, and those are the ones that come with higher uncertainty. So this is still forecast to become the first hurricane of the season as it approaches the southern windward islands by this uh, weekend, by Saturday. After that, it gets even more uncertain what happens over here in the Caribbean. There's a bunch of dry air and there's some wind shear. Uh, regardless of what happens here, it looks like by all best evidence, the flow would keep it well south of South Florida. Neither one of these threatens South Florida. Okay, guys, back to you. Okay, thank you, Luke. Welcome back everyone. If you're just tuning in, we now have another name tropical storm. It's tropical storm Hannah in the Gulf of Mexico making its way towards the Texas coastline. So right now here are the latest stats as of about an hour ago, the National Hurricane Center put out this latest update 40 mile per hour winds moving west northwest and uh, fairly slow already near seven miles per hour and that forward speed may actually slow down even a little bit more right near the Texas coast. So that's a problem. Slow Slow moving storms keep those impacts with you longer. The flooding rains are there longer. The winds are there longer as well. You've seen a big change in the presentation on the satellite. Big kind of disorganized blow up of thunderstorms earlier. Now much more organized central area of storms with that kind of classic uh, counterclockwise spin to it. Lots of good outflow for this storm. Some signs that more organization is on the way. And the forecast certainly has been kind of taking a nod to that a little Tip of the cap, 65 mile per hour winds now in the forecast by Saturday morning. Uh, early Saturday into kind of Saturday afternoon will be the coast time for the worst of the impacts. But look how slowly we're going to be moving across South Texas. That means uh, the tropical storm warnings have been stretched a little bit farther inland because we think those winds will go inland. And with this kind of presentation, with this wide field of counterclockwise spin, gosh, we're going to be bringing that uh, wind field in towards South Texas as we go through the day Friday into Saturday. So wind is one component, maybe not the biggest impact here. There will also be a lot of tropical rains that move through with this. So here's a look at that rainfall forecast and look at the oranges increasing on here with our official forecast. Uh, orange indicating maybe five to eight inches of rain. Uh, gosh, so that is certainly a, a significant impact in its own right. First 10 minutes of the newscast, your tropical weather update. We're tracking what is now tropical storm Hannah spinning in the Gulf of Mexico. That 5 a.m. advisory is coming in. And as we take a look at it, we're noticing that the system is very large. It takes up much of the Gulf of Mexico with plenty of precipitation. Here comes the numbers 40 miles per hour as it's moving west northwest at 9 miles per hour. As it does so, it is going to be a threat for tropical storm force winds and rain for parts of Texas from Brownsville all the way up towards the central portions of the state. We're talking rainfall not just for Texas, though. Look how wide spread and how far away from the system the rainfall is expected all the way into Mississippi. The Gulf Coast states will have to deal with that system. Otherwise, we have Gonzalo, this system just east of the Windward Islands. This system expected to be the first hurricane of the season. It was supposed to strengthen last night, but it went through some discrepancy of drier air and some upper level winds. Five M advisory on this system, winds of 60 miles per hour headed west at 14 miles per hour. We have a lot of viewers that are watching us in the Windward Islands this morning in the Lesser Antilles. You need to prepare. We have a tropical storm warning in effect for you and a hurricane watch in effect. We're going to expect the system to strengthen by tonight. Thanks, Aaron, and good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. So right now we do have a tropical storm Hannah in the Gulf of Mexico, sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. And here's the latest forecast track. It will make landfall in the next 24 hours on Saturday and into Sunday, producing lots of showers and thunderstorms and flooding concerns in that particular area. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Meanwhile, tropical storm Gonzalo in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, not that well organized, still a tropical storm system, and it will 
likely become a hurricane or a tropical storm status for the next couple of days, but then it will be a weaker storm on Sunday into Monday. It will likely fall apart in the Caribbean and then a tropical wave off the coast of Africa that will continue to track towards the west and into the Atlantic Ocean and development is possible early next week and only has a 30% chance of tropical development. Meanwhile, the sun is back here in South Florida. Plenty of sunshine this early morning in West Palm Beach and temperatures very warm as well. New advisory in 45 miles per hour. Tropical storm Hannah is steadily moving toward the west northwest at nine miles per hour. The uh, air car, aircraft recon that has been in there has found steadily winds somewhere around 50 miles per hour. So the uh, adjustment was made upward from the previous advisory from 40 now 45 and we are going to probably see it strengthen even a little bit more I think as it closes in on the Gulf Coast landfall somewhere near Corpus Christi we think by tomorrow late morning early afternoon with again uh, weather impacts spread far and wide from where the center is this is a, a reasonably large circulation the counterclockwise flow around this thing extends uh, a long way from the center and you can see that by looking at the surface observations right now again with the center right about there we're seeing rain showers and thunderstorms move in all the way from western Florida Panhandle through the southern tip of Texas and Brownsville and uh, winds really not much of an issue right now and they're not going to be uh, unless something gets uh, out of hand and we start to see strengthening much more quickly. It is going to be the rainfall where some places could get well in, in excess of six inches of rain along the Gulf Coast of Texas in particular. But here today the weather even you know not directly related to the core of uh, Hannah we are seeing some showers and thunderstorms roll in across parts of the Florida Panhandle nearby areas of Alabama Mississippi beaches uh, very rough the water rip currents I'm sure high uh, and also the thunderstorms moving through that will be the theme today it will also be the theme today across the Texas Gulf Coast and you can see the center of circulation right about there basically about 250 miles east of Corpus Christi steadily moving west northwest at almost 10 miles per hour hurricane uh, reconnaissance again just made another pass through here and uh, they've been slicing and dicing their way finding winds at the surface, sampling them at right around 50 miles per hour. So that's uh, sort of a sign that maybe this thing is getting its act a little bit better organized, but not perfect. There is a sort of rather asymmetry here noted in the cloud pattern. A lot of the uh, cloud pattern is distributed here with the center of circulation there. So there's some northerly shear impacting this system, which would tend to limit the rate at which this thing could strengthen. And I think that's a, a good thing to see, at least in the satellite pictures, because that may hold the intensity back. But even with it there, that strong or that wind shear, the strength uh, will probably go up a little bit as it does close in on the Texas Gulf Coast tomorrow morning, very near Corpus Christi. The intensity guidance, well, there's only a couple of models here showing you, but really all of them sort of show this gradual increase in strength uh, through tomorrow morning. And of course, it makes landfall and then weakens. None of the guidance is really suggesting that this has time or space to become a hurricane, but it still will become its own strong, uh, strong tropical storm, 60 miles per hour in the wind speed. But again, it is going to be the heavy rain, Colleen, with some amounts in excess of six inches in southern Texas. All right, Colleen, it's not just here, but we still have more in the tropics that we're following. Yes, we've talked about Hannah and Douglas, and now we want to move on to Gonzalo. Here's a live look at Barbados right now, where Hurricane Watch is up for the island and the Eastern Caribbean bracing for Tropical Storm Gonzalo as it is approaching and expected to strengthen before it reaches the islands tomorrow. Local media also reporting some long lines at stores yesterday as residents are starting to prepare. So I want to pull in Dr. Postel in the lab right now to talk more about Gonzalo because Dr. Postel, the Lesser Antilles is going to see the brunt of this storm in the next 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, it's moving very quickly toward the west at almost 20 miles per hour. And you can see that if you do the math, it's not going to be that much longer before Gonzalo here impacts at least southern parts of the Windward Islands. It looks like a very small storm, and if it's not careful, it's going to run right into South America. It better take a northward jog in order to avoid uh, that giant landmass, but uh, we'll see uh, how it fares going forward. I think the intensity in the latest update here from the National Hurricane Center has now been pulled back a little bit in terms of the expectation, and you can see that we're not really calling for it perhaps to become a hurricane as it moves through the islands and then back into the Caribbean here by 
by next week, early next week, weakening along the way. Notice that, that by early next week, this thing may have dissipated uh, as it encounters some very hostile atmospheric conditions and overall a very small storm, sometimes susceptible to those kinds of uh, overall environmental changes and that may be what is awaiting Gonzalo down the road on its steady progress toward the west. Right now the winds and weather fairly manageable across the islands. They're not really yet being impacted by Gonzalo but the dry air is impacting this system and that may, may be one of the reasons why it is fighting a little bit. It is choking, inhaling some of that dry air which tends to reduce the uh, sort of in, up, and out circulation that you expect with a strengthening or a healthy tropical system. Oftentimes these things form downdrafts and they choke off the thunderstorms that are required to maintain its intensity. That may be what's happening. And look, by uh, say Saturday night, early Sunday morning, Alex, it may be moving through the islands and then maybe even dissipating shortly thereafter. Dr. Postel, folks may be watching and thinking, okay, this thing, plenty of warm water. Mm -hmm. What would prevent it from just blowing up and intensifying so quickly? Well, internal structure, I don't think it's, you know, optimally suited right now to intensify very quickly, but with some of the radar charts that we're getting now suggest that it is trying to organize a bit better in the inside, and I'm talking right about there. That is where the center of circulation is, and it is indeed trying to wrap some thunderstorms around that center of circulation, and if that happens, then we could start to see the intensification uh, become a bit more rapid than it is right now. Now it's sort of slowly on its way up, but uh, if this thing closes off a little bit and we can really then begin to drop the pressures in the middle, then we might be dealing with a different situation. It is something worth watching definitely during the afternoon and overnight hours tonight if indeed thunderstorms make it all the way around. Now it's not clear it's doing that in this picture. There's some radar attenuation, so we don't know exactly what the inner core there looks like. But that's the main deal right now with Hannah, about 250 miles or so to the east, maybe a little bit less than that now, of Corpus Christi, Texas. And notice that even right now as we speak, some rough weather from time to time is moving on board into the Texas Gulf Coast. Let me show you Galveston. There you can see it on the bottom right part of your screen. The winds here are about 20 miles per hour, gusting a bit more than that. Uh, the surf is clearly rough. The rip currents are there. And uh, definitely not a beach day whatsoever. Stay out of that water. It's only going to get rougher and the weather's going to get worse. So here's the latest advice from the National Hurricane Center as of 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central. 45 miles per hour that moved up from 40 earlier this morning. I imagine based on some of the trends that we're seeing that might go up even a little bit more in the next advisory this evening. Something to keep in mind that there's not a whole lot of time to react. As I mentioned last night, it's not a whole lot of time and space for this thing to explode, but still, if it does strengthen, you know, maybe even a little bit more quickly than forecast, there's not a, lo not a lot of time to uh, make adjustments to account for that. The official forecast has this thing coming in at 60 miles per hour with a lot of heavy rain and some coastal flooding from some storm surge. That is indeed a possibility. Right now, overall, again, the big picture is here. We are starting to see the impacts all the way from Brownsville, believe it or not, to Pensacola, Florida. Colleen, it looks like we're going to be dealing with this with landfall expected of the center late tomorrow morning, early tomorrow afternoon, but the impacts already being felt. All right, welcome back into Weather Center Live. Thanks for joining us. So the latest update as of 1 p.m. Central Time is for Tropical Storm Hannah, 50 mile per hour storm. Okay, so we've seen some slow strengthening and looking at the satellite, you do notice that blow up a thunderstorm, especially right there on the south and east side. Still kind of dry though, back over towards the Texas side. So the bulk of this is really an east loaded system. It's trying to get better organized, but it's running out of time and we're not going to see rapid intensification, even though the water temperatures are warm. Looking at the radar, all right, you can see that spin, but notice there's no real thunderstorms and intense banding near the core. So that's why we're not going to see a rapid uh, intensification with this. Some of the stronger winds are actually out in some of these outer bands that you see with some of these thunderstorms and also starting to impact southern Louisiana. We're starting to get some thunderstorm pop up now east or west of the Galveston Bay. So that'll be something to be watching. All right.
Here's how it goes from here at this point forth. Heading to tonight, we'll still be offshore. By tomorrow morning, we'll be within, you know, 100 miles or so of landfall. And then it stays kind of slow as it moves towards Monterey, Mexico. Um, even by the end of the weekend, we may still be holding on to a tropical storm with very heavy rainfall well inland from the coast. So bottom line, tropical storm conditions are going to be expected, especially south of Houston near Port Aransas, getting into Corpus Christi, and then all the way down into South Padre Island, and even inland. Just because you're not right on the beach doesn't mean you're going to be uh, exempt from those stronger gusts. Power outages, a possibility. Flash flooding, though, is going to be the biggest bet. Three to eight inches, and we may have totals upwards of 12. Thankfully, storm surge not going to be a significant issue, but we will have some coastal flooding, and that will be something we'll look forward to. All right, so there we go. Heading into this afternoon, it gets a little bit closer, but the rain is still well to the north. We see the rain showers start to increase overnight. There's 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, and we see that continue as we go towards Saturday afternoon. Strong winds and potential landfall sometime midday tomorrow. 3 o'clock, the Local 10 News first cast starts right Right now, I'm Christy Krueger and I'm Janice Fernandez. Let's get right to your top story at three. Right now we are tracking two systems in the tropics. Tropical Storm Gonzalo is heading towards the Caribbean and Tropical Storm Hannah is expected to make landfall in the next 24 hours on the coast of Texas. And this is some new video coming into us from Galveston. That's where residents are preparing for the storm there. The Red Cross says it uh, doesn't think it will need shelters up and running this weekend, but they are going to be prepared because of the pandemic. They'll be checking the temperatures of all volunteers and anyone who would possibly need to stay at a shelter. They can't put more than 50 people in any one room, so they are looking into hotels, campsites, even dormitories that follow social distancing rules. Oh boy, so it's definitely busy out there. We do have our meteorologist Lou Doris tracking it all for us. Hey, all Luke. right. Oh, sorry, Christy. Let's go ahead and start out. We'll have Tropical Storm Hannah. Uh, winds to 50 miles per hour. Its strongest winds are actually out here in these bands. The center part of the storm, the core, has had uh, a little bit of a uh, trouble today, a little bit of difficulty. Nonetheless, we don't expect rapid intensification with this, but gradual intensification. And then there we are by tomorrow, sometime on our Saturday, maybe as early as the morning, making landfalls a strong tropical storm, thereafter moving inland and dissipating. The greatest threat with it, aside, you know, from tropical storm force winds, is going to be these bands of widespread heavy flooding rain, and the worst of that will be near the center, which will be most likely in southern portions of Texas. So that's Hannah. Let's go out to Gonzalo now. Winds down as of the 2 p.m. advisory to 45 miles per hour. It's had problems bringing in dry air, and it's a micro little system. It's a tiny tropical storm. But tropical storms, they can sputter and then rev back up rather quickly. It looks like it may not be able to become a hurricane as of the latest forecast just because it struggled so much today and really a little bit yesterday, but nonetheless near hurricane strength as it approaches the southern windward islands also by tomorrow. So Saturday could have two landfalls as we go through the day. After it gets past the Windward Islands, it goes into the Caribbean, and you can see the forecast here, gradual uh, de-intensification. It goes down, it weakens a little bit, so as we get into Monday, it may just be a remnant low. The reason why is, watch this, you can track it with me, it gets out here into the Caribbean, kind of loses its structure, that's because here comes dry air, and that would cause it to fall apart. It's already had problems with dry air, and there's a whole lot of it, so that would, of course, be good news for anybody further west as it falls apart. Uh, in the Caribbean. Elsewhere, strong tropical wave moving off of Africa. Medium chance of forming early next week. We're going to have to watch this one. Not necessarily here for South Florida. It'd likely stay south, but that could certainly uh, pose a risk early next week as it gets into the general vicinity of where Gonzalo is. And also, fierce Hurricane Douglas is out in the Pacific. And look at what it's aiming at. Uh, the Hawaiian Islands. Now it's going to move over cooler water and it will weaken as it does so, but they could have a hurricane in Hawaii as we go to Sunday. So again, this weekend, greatest threat with that aside from the winds would be mudslides. It's always a concern in Hawaii whenever you have uh, tropical systems nearby. And see a bigger coverage of the showers and storms. That's why rain chances do spike on Sunday, lingers a little bit on Monday, and then some drier air, maybe even that Saharan dust filters in for Tuesday and Wednesday with some uh, 
breezy or some uh, hazy conditions. So here's Hannah here. It will make landfall tomorrow afternoon as a Category 1 hurricane on the Texas coastline. Gonzalo is just struggling out there, and it's going to barely become or barely maintain travel storm status and then dissipate after entering the Caribbean. And then the third one out there has a 40% chance to develop. And I put the little timeline here. So if it's going to do it uh, on Monday, it'll be over here. By Wednesday, it'll be approaching the island. Now back to the tropics, taking a look at the Atlantic. Plenty of the issues out there, Dr. Neb. We've got Tropical Storm Gonzalo. We've also got a new area coming off the uh, coast of Africa, and those are always concerning later in the season. Yeah, and I think that later in the season kind of setup is setting up kind of now. So even more concerning uh, than in most late July departures of tropical waves from the west coast of Africa. We still have Gonzalo, 40 mile an hour winds on the most recent advisory. We'll see what the hurricane hunters find. The Air Force has forward deployed to St. Croix. It's a good thing they're good hurricane hunters because if they fly by it too fast, they might miss it. It's so small. One big thunderstorm complex. Actually, there's nothing else around that is that tall of a thunderstorm, so they'll probably see it out there on the horizon uh, pretty well uh, isolated from anything else. It's such a small system. But look at this tropical wave Mike was just talking about that is uh, has left Africa moving over the Cabo Verde Islands. This one is headed westward. Uh, but for the meantime, Grenada, Tobago still under a tropical storm warning as this quickly moves in. So tomorrow will be the day that they'll get the gusty winds and locally heavy rains, but it'll be a quick in and out. And then I think Gonzalo will be down for the count. Uh, the Hurricane Center doesn't forecast uh, a cyclone lasting uh, much past the weekend. And if you look at the European model ensemble members, the dots are their stopping points. That's when it dies and nothing lasts uh, into the Western Caribbean. So that's good news. Our confidence is increasing. This is not going to be a bigger problem downstream. Look at the European model uh, fields, the depiction of the low level spin. There goes Gonzalo. But here comes that next wave. And by middle of next week, we could have a larger system than Gonzalo as it dies over the Western Caribbean. This next system may be moving near over the islands uh, within the next week. So we could be going through this all over again a week from now. Hurricane Center is all over at 40% chance of a depression or storm forming in that same central tropical Atlantic area that Gonzalo has been in. And the reason that we're concerned about this is because the fuel is there. In fact, it's warmer than average throughout the deep tropical Atlantic and Caribbean. That's why the switch has already been flipped. It feels like August already, Mike and Alex. Well, the NOAA Hurricane Hunters flying into Tropical Storm Hannah made two different passes through the center today. That's a look at them going through the low level clouds there. You can see the ocean surface below, the Gulf of Mexico surface below. You know, compared to yesterday when we showed you the Air Force Hurricane Hunters, this one seems to be a lot smoother flight. Um, <laughs> I think I'd rather be on this one than the one they were flying yesterday. Either way, boy, they are doing a thankless job. Are they not trying to get us some information, keeping us all really, really safe? Hey, welcome back, everyone. We've got, exp uh, we've got extended coverage for you tonight. We will be with you till 9 o'clock Eastern to cover Tropical Storm Hannah. Yeah, I stretched before this show because we've got so much going on, Mike. You don't yeah, want to pull a no, muscle. No, you don't. I mean, especially like this. I feel like, you know, especially when you're using the telestrate, the, the, the traps, yeah. you know, you know yeah. the delts. And and whatever this one is, this, yeah, it's just, it gets sore. <laughs> you just put your uh, Dr. Nab, we are bracing for Hannah. Looking at Galveston, man, that camera bumping in the wind. Now, they are not under the hurricane warning. That's farther to the south, but heavy rain, flash flooding will be an issue for portions of Texas this weekend. Yeah, and it'll be gusty, and uh, I would say it's not the best time to be going into the water. Please pay attention to the lifeguards. Uh, so, yeah, Houston and Galveston probably catching a break here, but places like Corpus Christi, Brownsville, Harlem, in that area really going to be taking it on the chin here, especially from water, but maybe also from wind. 50 mile an hour tropical storm as of the last advisory, but we do have the NOAA hurricane hunters on their way in again. Uh, they're coming in from the northeast. They haven't quite gotten into where the tropical storm forest winds are, but within the next several minutes, they will, and this data will be incorporated into the intermediate public advisory that will come out before the top of the hour. So stay tuned to this half hour for all those updates. Here's the visible imagery showing the the inner core of it starting to get more and more organized. The northwestern side is drier. Uh, the south side uh, has a lot of rain down here, and the east side has a lot of wind in here, according to the last Hurricane Hunter mission. And we've also got a lot of bands off to the northeast. So this is definitely not just a point on the map. A lot of heavy rain could be 
uh, affecting portions of Louisiana. The upper levels, we do have a bit of a trough here uh, over the uh, southern United States, and that has been impinging on the upper level outflow on the north side. So maybe that explains partially why the northwest side is a little drier right now. But that's a good thing because that's giving us a little more time to prepare tonight. But when you go to bed tonight, you got to be ready for the storm because tomorrow morning it's going to go downhill quickly and stay off the roads in deep south Texas and call 911 if you're in your home and water coming in from freshwater flooding and your life is threatened. This is the kind of high end flood event that could happen in deep south Texas from what could be not just several inches of rain for many of you, but a foot or more for some of you. That's a lot of water and the models have come into much better agreement on this. And oh, by the way, it's forecast to be a hurricane at landfall. So we've got a lot to deal with, Alex. Very closely in the Atlantic Basin, then another one. Hurricane Douglas getting closer to Hawaii and that new wave uh, moving off of Africa and of course tropical storm Hannah now as we've seen getting stronger it has intensified up to a 65 mile an hour storm now we begin with Hannah as it is growing stronger with the tropical storm and hurricane warnings that are up for a million people in Texas that includes Corpus Christi and South Padre Island. I'm meteorologist Chris Warren with you here until 12 Central, 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. Also along with storm specialist Carl Parker tracking it all from the lab. Want to go to Carl right now. The advisory from the National Hurricane Center, the 10 o'clock Central advisory is in. The pressure's down to 992 millibars. It, it slowed down a little bit, Carl. It was moving west to 10, now at 8. Uh, anything else stand out to you with this advisory? Well, yeah, just the fact that, you know, when you raise the intensity, last night we were looking at a forecast for a 50 mile per hour storm this evening. And so when you raise the intensity to 65, well, that's going to have a downstream effect. We're going to be looking at a stronger storm and a hurricane tomorrow morning, most likely by 7 a.m. And then that storm uh, very slowly coming into the coast through the course of the day. You mentioned the forward speed. That, too, is a huge part of this. The fact that it's just not going to be moving very quickly is going to just drop drag those effects out for long, long periods of time here on the coast and then also farther inland. So again, a 65 mile per hour storm, uh, just uh, less than 10 miles per hour shy of what you need for hurricane. That is expected tomorrow morning in this position. That's seven o'clock in the morning. And then this is seven o'clock in the evening. So I want you to take a look at that space, that distance right there. That is 12 hours of time. That's a really long period of time. So the weather's starting to go downhill there in Corpus and areas to the south. And, you know, thankfully, there's not a lot between Corpus and the Rio Grande Valley. You've got a lot of population along the Rio Grande Valley, a lot of population in Corpus. In between, there's just not very much at all there in uh, Kings County. But uh, it's certainly we could be talking about prolonged wind, very heavy rain in Corpus and in the valley and then beyond that there's another 12 hour segment as the storm slowly makes its way uh, across the Rio Grande Valley and towards Laredo. So, you know, this entire stretch here, that's the full day. That's 7 a.m. Saturday uh, to 7 a.m. on Sunday morning, a 24 hour period in which it just doesn't move very much at all. Been a little expansion here. Hurricane warnings farther south, more down into Kings County. And again, as I mentioned, uh, there's not a lot of population in this area. There's a little town that's farther inland called Fal Furious. I was actually there for Hurricane Brett uh, back uh, in the early 2000s. And oh, excuse me, that was actually 1999 when that occurred. And again, there's just not a whole lot down there. Uh, one other change I want to tell you about has been this increase in the storm surge potential up to three to five feet. And so, you know, once you get to three feet of storm surge, that is life-threatening storm surge. So we're talking particularly about those barrier islands, Mustang Island outside of Corpus Christi, and then also Matagorda Island uh, all the way up the coast there. Uh, you really don't want to be on those islands as the storm is coming in because you're going to have that storm surge, that rise, water level rise, and repeated rounds of that with waves coming in because it's going to be just uh, such a long duration event. Now look at the satellite presentation here and you know really interesting there, there appears to be you know maybe just a little bit of dry air trying to sneak in on the west side 
you know, and sometimes that'll have an impact and it'll begin to bring down storms near the center. That's not happening in this case. I mean, these storms are going gangbusters uh, near the center of that circulation, just a really profound flare up of thunderstorms near the center. And that too, from a satellite perspective, is an indication of a strengthening storm. This thing is definitely getting its act together. We're even seeing uh, some indication of an eye wall there on the radar. So I wanna show you one high resolution model forecast here. It may not happen exactly like this. This is meant to give you the flavor of this. This particular model brings this eye wall in it's starting tomorrow morning, so that's when conditions are really starting to go downhill. And again, this prolonged period of water being pushed to the coast and that uh, water level rise there along the coast. In this model's interpretation, the eye wall is maybe just south of Corpus, but I'll tell you there are other models that show it farther to the north. So it is entirely possible that Corpus gets right squarely into that eye wall and into the very worst of the wind. Uh, also, if it is a little farther south, that's going to mean that the Rio Grande Valley gets into the very worst of the wind. And all the way around here, all across deep south Texas, we're going to be talking about heavy rain and life-threatening flash flood potential for a huge section of south Texas. Chris, over to you. Hey, Carl, real quick, I want to go back to the satellite that you were just showing us. And you were talking about the dry air. And the fact that this storm was fending off that dry air. So will you first kind of explain to everybody why dry air is significant, how it affects a hurricane, yeah. and then why it's so significant that this storm is fending off that dry air? Yeah, well, you know, a hurricane is a, is a great big heat engine. And the way that this heat engine works is it draws in warm and humid air. And when you get condensation, that process, uh, that actually... Uh, releases heat, releases latent heat, and that keeps the heat engine going. Now, when you bring in drier air, you introduce drier air, well, that creates some downdrafts in these thunderstorms, so they actually begin to collapse a little bit when you get enough dry air. And we've seen that a billion times where you've got a healthy looking tropical cyclone, some dry air gets injected into the circulation. In fact, we just saw that with the one that went up the East Coast. And then you see a collapsing of those thunderstorms. Uh, and oftentimes what you'll see is some dry air tries to intrude but the circulation is so strong and it's drawing up so much warm and humid air from all around the Gulf of Mexico, even though you've got this little intrusion of dry air, it's able to say, you know what, I don't really care about that. I'm just going to go ahead and continue to, uh, to formulate my, my very efficient heat engine here. So uh, this thing is, is looking more and more healthy by the moment. I mean, that is a a really <clears throat> impressive satellite picture, and I would not be at all surprised if it is a, a very formidable looking storm uh, by the time we get into tomorrow morning. Chris? And, and Carl, you made a great point too a few moments ago when you mentioned, as you were covering this last night, the forecast for right now wasn't this strong. So, yes. so would it surprise you? The forecast is a category one tomorrow as makes landfall. Would it surprise you that it's stronger than that? Well, you know, it, nothing really surprises me in tropical weather. I mean, you know, that, that's one of the things that I've said for a long time is never say never in tropical weather because, and particularly in this part of the world, this is a part of the Gulf of Mexico where we have seen storms get very strong. And the storm that I mentioned that I was actually in in Fal Furious in 1999 was, was Hurricane Brett. And that was one that rapidly intensified. It, it shot up very quickly. And so, you know, there's always this outside chance that you see a storm uh, really, really intensifying quickly. And, you know, one of the things that we like to look at is what's going on with the environment. Well, we know there's a little bit of wind shear on the north side. We can see that perhaps there is some dry air that's trying to get into the circulation. But for the most part, the upper level environment is favorable. It's certainly over very warm water. And so, yeah, you know, yes, I would say that it's possible that it could get even stronger than a 75 mile per hour storm. Uh, one thing that's working against it is time. Basically, I mean, it's just going to run out of time. You've got now uh, probably about 12 hours with the storm out over open water. And so we'll see what it can do in that time. But but yeah, I think it's within the realm of possibility that it could be even stronger than 75 miles per hour. All right, Storm Specialist Carl Parker, we'll get back to you here in just a few moments. This is a big heads up for nearly a million people under hurricane and tropical storm alerts along the Texas coast as this tropical storm likely to be a hurricane gets closer and closer to making landfalls. 
I'm meteorologist Todd Bork. Your bottom of the hour update on Tropical Storm Hannah. It's inching its way closer to hurricane status, but at this point right now, the impact's going to remain the same, whether it stays a tropical storm or a category one hurricane. Take a look at the numbers. It's a 65 mile an hour winds, stain winds around the eye. Pressure still holding at 991 millibars. It has been dropping steadily over the last couple of updates. We have widespread tropical storm warnings is anywhere from Galveston all the way down to Brownsville. Hurricane warnings, you can see right there, Corpus Christi, you're right in the middle of that. In addition, we're starting to pick up also a storm surge warning out there. A little concerned about the amount of storm surge we can see, particularly as we head through your Saturday, three to five feet, particularly on the northern edge of that center of circulation. So it's going to be a tough day for South Texas. Another update coming your way in a half hour. Welcome back to Weather Nation. As you can see, the camera from back on Friday evening, rocking and rolling with winds already kicking up in Galveston, Texas, and so has the surf. In fact, conditions are only going to deteriorate for us as we move forward into the next 12 to 24 hours. We have all the latest coverage on Tropical Storm Hannah, which has continued to strengthen overnight, and now we are looking at it becoming a Category 1 hurricane within hours and we'll let you know as soon as that update comes in from the National Hurricane Center. But right now it is a strong tropical storm and you can just see right here on your screen that swirl coming in around it, those bands forming. I can tell you this is looking a lot more like a hurricane than a tropical storm, especially what the storm looked like 24 hours ago. And you can see we do have some of the outer bands right now that are starting to move in toward Port Arthur over toward Galveston. So you could see some heavy down this morning, maybe some isolated storms, but we're going to really be watching this storm. As you'll notice, it's continuing to move in that generally westerly direction, but some of the models are taking it even a little bit further south. And if I go to one of the local radars here, let's go to the Corpus Christi radar, and you can really see if I stop the clock here for you. Starting to get some very intense bands on the backside of this. So I would say some of our most intense winds would be right here in the band that looks like this. But out ahead of it, we do have some storms here. But the good news is those are moving away from the coast. But as we continue to move into the next several hours, we're still going to see even some of these bands going into parts of the Louisiana coastline and then going all the way over toward New Orleans and Gulfport, you'll notice. We also have some heavy rain that's being pushed in. These are going to be tropical downpours, so we might have some issues with flooding this morning. But to give you a general idea of what that system looks like here on Viper Radar, this is our storm system right now. But I do want to take the graphics and show you what you need to know about the hazards, because if we look at our satellite, you can see how large a storm system this is. In fact, the overnight update coming in from Tropical Storm Hannah and continuing to show a very large field of moisture around this as it's continuing to move from that westerly direction toward the coast and we're still going to be tracking hazards this morning but especially the later we get into the day the closer this gets to the coastline we will be seeing problems here's why we're seeing strengthening you've got those very warm Gulf of Mexico waters but you also have very light wind shear and those are two ingredients needed to allow a storm to really ramp up and that's what we've been seeing within just the last 12 hours especially we've had some hurricane hunter reconnaissance flight going through the storm and seeing this trend of strengthening. And so we are looking at as it moves closer to making landfall, becoming a category one hurricane, which would make this the first hurricane of the Atlantic season. But these are some of the key messages I want to point out for you. Life threatening storm surge is going to be something we're having to watch very closely, especially during high tide as some of those bigger swells start coming in. But we also have hurricane and tropical storm force winds in the forecast for today, and especially later today, that rain could produce life threatening flash flooding. But these are our current alerts that are out there right now. Tropical storm warnings in orange, hurricane warnings in red, and the hurricane warnings, that's what we're anticipating within the next 12 to 24 hours, those hurricane force winds. Conditions are only going to to deteriorate from here and so this is the time to make sure you are prepared and sheltered as this storm moves in. I did mention life-threatening storm surge and you can see here that we are anticipating anywhere from three to five feet in the yellow shaded area and I've listed there for you on your screen some of the bays that we are looking at the highest storm surge coming in or that inundation along the coast. Uh, inundation along the coast from storm surge is one of the number one killers associated with tropical systems so make sure you are in a safe place 
if you live along the coastline. Now, in addition to that, we are going to see very, very heavy downpours, which could trigger flash flooding. So already flash flood watches out there from Galveston to Victoria to Corpus Christi, all the way down to Brownsville. This means flash flooding is possible. If a warning is issued for your community, that means flash flooding is occurring or about to occur. So make sure you're paying attention to all of those alerts. And we always have them scrolling for you right here on the bottom of your screen. Something different this morning, the track a lot further south than originally anticipated, but as we know, things can change very, very quickly as well with the storm's timing and direction. I've even been watching it on satellite and radar, and it's been moving a little bit. Sometimes a little bit of a wobble can take it in a completely different direction. But one of the things you need to focus in on is the other threat that we're going to have are isolated tornadoes, especially in the brown shaded area. These can be weak and brief, but they can do a lot of damage in a very short period period of time. And there's a lot of different hazards that we'll be watching as we move forward into the coming days, but it's going to be especially as this moves in and those bands in the right front quadrant of the direction that the storm is moving, that we see those isolated tornadoes, that we see the strongest winds and sometimes the heaviest rain bands as well. And as we work out the glitches this morning, your storm station keeping tabs on a triple threat. Two named storms on the move with a tropical wave trailing right behind. Here's a live look outside our North Bay Village studios on this Saturday morning. So far, things are looking pretty nicely, but again, we want to begin with a check on our local weather and the tropics. Looks like we'll be seeing lots of changes in the coming days. That's right. Meteorologist Erica Delgado in the Plex with a look at the first forecast for us. Erica, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ethan. South Florida, we'll start with the storm that's closest to home, and it's the one that brought us rain through much of last week, but now it's a tropical storm, and its name is Hannah. Uh, have its, has its uh, eyes set for Texas, expected to make landfall there later this afternoon. You can see here for us in South Florida, things are relatively quiet. So let's start with the 5 a.m. advisory. Maximum sustained winds of 70 miles per hour. There is a Hurricane Hunter aircraft out there right now investigating the system right now. Winds uh, are moving towards the west between 5 and 10 miles per hour. And as you can see, it's just to the east of Corpus Christi. So latest forecast track does have some strengthening before it does make landfall later today, possibly becoming a hurricane at at some point throughout the day today and then as it moves inland across portions of Texas and into Mexico, we are expecting the system to weaken. We have another tropical storm, Gonzalo, making its approach across the Windward Islands. It's looking very disorganized with maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. There are tropical storm watches and warnings in effect uh, expected to cross through areas in between to, uh, Trinidad and Tobago and then eventually moving over conditions less favorable for any development. Now, as far as the system is concerned, it will be battling some upper level shear, some stronger winds as it moves over portions of the Caribbean, but then there's another system just to the south of the Cape Verde Islands. This one has a moderate chance for some development, especially once it moves over this area within the next couple of days or so. Your local forecast is coming up in about 15 minutes or so. Good morning. Breaking now on the Weather Channel, our first hurricane of the season in the Atlantic Basin. It's Hurricane Hannah. National Hurricane Center just updated the winds now to 75 miles an hour. Hannah making a beeline for the South Texas coast. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel in Port Aransas, where the entire beach has been encased by the surf. We'll have more on the impacts and we'll time it out for you. First, back to Atlanta. There's more in the tropics. Here's Reynolds. Oh, you're right about that. Hannah, Hannah may be a hurricane, but not the only only tropical system that we're watching this morning, Hurricane Douglas. The strongest storm on the planet right now is nearing the Hawaiian Islands when heavy rain and dangerous wind will slam the tropical paradise. Welcome back, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to AMHQ Weekend. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf, along with meteorologist Kelly Cass. And this just in, Hannah, now a Category 1 hurricane. Kelly, hard to believe. Yeah, pressure has been dropping, and Hurricane Hunters and Doppler radar data is indicating that we now have our first hurricane of the season in the Atlantic Basin. So this is Hannah. Winds have been knocked up to 75 miles per hour because the pressure has been knocked down from 988 to 982 millibars. So the lower the pressure in the center, uh, that usually means... We'll see a strengthening system and therefore the winds do increase. It is still moving to the west at about nine miles per hour. Note the location though, it's no longer over 100 miles away, but now 
90 miles away from the coast of Texas here, east northeast of Port Mansfield, Texas. Uh, so right now is the time to prepare and finish up those preparations as the weather will be deteriorating rather quickly throughout the day today. We don't expect a landfall to occur until sometime late this afternoon toward the evening time frame because this thing is slowing down or is expected to slow down just before making a landfall. But note the winds by the time we get towards later on this afternoon could be as high as 80 miles per hour. So strengthening a little bit more before interacting with land. The wind speed goes down, but the rain totals, they go up. We are talking about a major flash flood threat along deep south Texas and into northern Mexico as well. And I think of real interest, I personally, is 92L. That's pretty feisty for this early in the season. And I know you've got a rundown on all of those right now, including Gonzalo. Yeah, let's have a look at Gonzalo. Mike, thank you very much for your reporting. Right now, Mike has a wind that is more of a north wind, sort of parallel to the coast. It's going to get a lot worse where he is when the wind becomes more onshore later on this morning and the early afternoon hours. So stay safe out there. Everyone else as well. Tropical storm Gonzalo. This is, yeah, another one out there closing in on parts of the Lesser Antilles. In fact, getting very close to Venezuela and South America. It is less impressive. It is on a weakening trend. Um, it looked much healthier days ago, but as it's moved westward, it has encountered some very hostile conditions atmospherically and otherwise. And that is why in the forecast, you don't see this cone extending out past tomorrow evening. This thing is likely to dissipate, completely devolve, either into an open wave or to nothing at all, really, an area sort of just a swirling massive cloud uh, with not much there. That's good news. So Gonzalo is seeing its demise in front of it. And you can see on the pictures, it doesn't look like much anymore. What was once sort of a, a very small, coherent ball of thunderstorms is kind of elongated and stretched out and still bringing some, you know, unkind weather to perhaps parts of the uh, southern Windward Islands and Trinidad and Tobago. But Really, overall, nothing that is unmanageable. Not much different than, let's say, a tropical wave moving through, which happens every several days. Look at the atmosphere around it. I mean, really, the, the weather conditions are very dry. That has been one of the reasons why Gonzalo has really not made it uh, any further than it is now. And this is its forecast going forward. You can see we track it along parts of the Southern Caribbean, and that will very likely be the end of Gonzalo. But as uh, Mike was mentioning, there is another one out there, and I'm going to get to it right here. I've got to show it to you real quick. There is a fairly substantial tropical wave out here that may indeed evolve into a depression or a named storm in the next five days. Once again, a W for the E. <laughs> Well, yeah, there was some other uh, guidance out there that also suggested, Mike, that this had an opportunity to strengthen as it closed in on the coast, and it's doing just that a little bit. I don't think there's a whole lot of room to get much stronger than it is now, but a 75-mile-per-hour Category 1 with a lot of rain, some storm surge, and, of course, some wind damage all on the docket for later on this morning and this afternoon across the southern Texas Gulf Coast. It is moving steadily toward the west at about 8 miles per hour, so landfall later on this afternoon, 5-ish o'clock or so on its current pace. Now moving even maybe slightly south of due west. If you were to sort of just look at the more recent trends, it may be more like that coming in possibly to Kennedy County in Texas. Again, that may be a little wiggle. Not sure if it's a long-term movement, but we'll be watching that very carefully. Uh, winds right now very manageable, but Corpus Christi Naval Air Station now gusting to 47, sustained 35. Not technically tropical storm force winds there, but very close, and the winds will get quite a bit stronger all across the region. Likely seeing hurricane force wind gusts especially when the winds become more onshore, uh, as the strongest winds very likely kind of in a corridor about like that and even extending uh, distant, more distant from the center than there. So, you know, watch out for those hurricane force wind gusts, perhaps 70 to 80 miles per hour at the highest, I think. That would mean that you want to take shelter inside as the worst weather comes in because that kind of wind can do damage, and you're going to want to make sure that you're away from windows as well. Treat it like a tornado warning when the eye wall comes in. We got some outer rain bands also moving across parts of North Texas. Last graphic I'm going to show you is the expected landfall later on this afternoon uh, south of Corpus Christi, but Corpus get wind gusts well over 60 miles per hour, Perhaps. And uh, this continues on into Mexico with very heavy rain there as well. And stay tuned for the Weather Channel throughout the day as we track Hannah. Oh, those higher gusts should come in there uh, this afternoon as you get those bands associated with the center that goes into your south.
Yeah, certainly. That's where the heavier rain is, too, looking at the radar. So that's where the strongest uh, winds will be as well. So um, watching the, the coastline here, and they have all these picnic tables, and one by one, they're kind of being dismantled and becoming victims of the, the, the agitated surf from uh, Hurricane Hannah here, still battering these things. You know, it's a little refuge of shade uh, out here on the beach. And as you can see along the shore, there's still plenty of them up, but yeah, we'll check throughout the morning to see how many is almost like dominoes. They're going to be slowly kind of uh, knocked down as we have more and more of the surf coming in here. And in fact, I'm normally standing on a place that would be uh, pavement, and it's covered with a thick, heavy, wet sand here as the tide continues to come on through here. Now, this was supposed to make landfall as a tropical storm, but this morning upgraded to a hurricane. They changed the forecast yesterday. I want to bring in Dr. Greg Postel to talk about this. And one of the ingredients is just the warm waters here. Temperatures 87, 89 degree water temperature. This seems to be like a hotbed for uh, to, to really breed and, and strengthen tropical systems. Yeah, Paul, that was definitely one of the factors that allowed Hannah to strengthen from a tropical storm to a hurricane and maybe even strengthen a little bit more past this. We are dealing with a 75 mile per hour category one hurricane with uh, definitely potential for a lot of flooding rain and significant storm surge. Water rises several feet above Norman dry ground. Paul and Mike are already experiencing some of that as we speak, some of the wave run up as well. So what we've got is a hurricane that is closing in on South Texas. If you're just turning in, you might be thinking, what happened? Well, yeah, we are dealing with now a strengthening system as it approaches the coast. We've seen that before lately. It seems to be more common than not. What we've got there is some wind gusts. Uh, Seidel and Paul were talking about the wind gusts. Uh, the Naval Air Station at Corpus Christi gusting to 47 miles per hour with a sustained wind of 36. But the strongest winds have yet to arrive, and I'll talk about when they will. And it might happen even after landfall. How about that? Here's a close-in shot at what we've got at some of the conditions locally where we're dealing with Port Aransas, 32 sustained, Rockport, 22 sustained. So very manageable winds right now and only some scattered showers. But the worst weather you can see is sort of circulating around the center of Hannah, the eye, which is right in there. And as the winds become more east rather than north, the wind speeds along the coast will gradually pick up and the weather will get worse. But it's not just in South Texas. Let's go up the coast a little bit. We are even seeing some significant rain and gusty winds moving through Houston, Texas with some thunder and lightning. And the threat for tornadoes is significant across this region later on this afternoon. We already had a tornado warning earlier that it's common with landfalling tropical systems on the edges of Especially. This is also what we've got on the edge of Hannah. Rain coming in into parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. So the beach weather, not good. Rip current risk high. Gusty winds as well. All on the outer edge with a fairly large circulation associated with Hannah. So let's talk about that circulation because there's the center of it right about there. Now, right now, the winds along the coast are kind of parallel to it. Once uh, Hannah moves inland about like that, say just south of due west, when the wind turns around to the the east and into the southeast. When that flow comes on board, that's when the wind speeds will pick up. That's when you're most likely to see wind gusts at hurricane strength up to 75 miles per hour, maybe a little bit higher than that, mostly along the coast. Once you get inland, even just off the beaches, the wind speeds radically diminish and uh, becomes much less of an issue. Then it becomes a rain issue. Unfortunately, a lot of rain is coming for South Texas and our friends in Mexico as well. We're going to be dealing with this long after landfall. So landfall doesn't end the story. This continues on its way across the Rio Grande during the morning hours tomorrow morning and bringing with it very heavy rain, landslides and mudslides, all a possibility as well, even though wind by then will not be a threat. Here's what we've got for the amount of rain yet to come as much as a foot in South Texas, probably just north of Brownsville and uh, also we are going to be dealing again with that storm surge potential especially when the winds turn around to the east water rises of three to five feet above normally dry ground significant coastal flooding also an issue with landfalling Hannah you've got more analysis on Hannah and the other threat for millions will be inland and the heavy rainfall totals of double digits yes uh, rainfall will be a significant threat some storm surge will be also and the wind as well so we got the trifecta there for you and let's have a look at the 
radar, the latest radar trend showing you Hannah is closing in on South Texas as we speak. The winds are slowly beginning to pick up. Uh, Corpus Christi Naval Air Station, 36 gusts to 47. Those are the strongest winds that I could find right now on land. But keep in mind, the strongest winds are out in this zone on the east and even in the southeast side of the system. So once the system makes landfall, it's around that time and even shortly thereafter. That's about when we're going to see those strongest winds come on board. There's a sample of them again right now. And you can see that the center keeps moving steadily toward the west or even slightly south of due west. But it's not just even in South Texas. Their impacts felt far and wide. Let's go up the coast here on the Texas coast. we got Houston, some scattered showers and thunderstorms, gusty winds. The outer rain bands of Hannah are affecting Houston in areas nearby. And of course, on the satellite pictures, this is beautiful. You might be tempted to think, well, the center circulation is out here. Is that the eye? It's not. The center circulation is actually underneath or very close to this area of very deep thunderstorms, tall thunderstorms out there helping to uh, at least maintain Hannah's strength and maybe giving it a little opportunity to strengthen a little bit more before it makes landfall. Just not a lot of time and space and room for this thing to strengthen very quickly, but it could uptick a little bit as it moves on closer to the coast. And then look what happens tomorrow morning. The center may be inland, well distance inland, but we're still dealing with this onshore coastal flooding threat with gusty winds as well all throughout the morning hours. And make sure you stay tuned to the Weather Channel all day long. We'll have live coverage along the Texas coast with the arrival of Hurricane Hannah. There it goes, according to the Euro model by early next week, and then moving through potentially the Leeward Islands and the Windward Islands of the Lesser Antilles and into the Caribbean. And in about a week's time, maybe closer than that to parts of the Caribbean and the United States. Something to watch. Long time to watch it. It's distant, distant way out there, but uh, just giving you a heads up. Here's the latest advisory that uh, Mike Seidel was talking about on Hurricane Hannah. Intensity come up a little bit, now 80 miles per hour. A Category 1 hurricane slowing down a little bit. So there's some room, a little bit of room, for this thing to strengthen even more as it closes in on the South Texas uh, coast. And that is something to monitor very carefully because as this thing comes inland, it is indeed likely to bring all the hazards that accompany a landfalling tropical cyclone. That would be wind, which could gust over 75 miles per hour, even on the beaches and some distance inland. That could bring down trees. You're going to want to sort of treat uh, the worst part of the storm like a tornado warning. Move inland uh, or in, uh, into a shelter, into a building with as many walls between you and the outside as possible, away from windows. And of course, very heavy rain is going to be a significant issue going forward. And uh, that is one of the things to contend with also storm surge, several feet of storm surge with water rises above normally dry grounds. And as you mentioned, it's going to be a very long duration event. I mean, this going on for hours and hours and hours, really the rest of the day today, Corpus into Kleberg County, into Kennedy County, uh, down through all of Padre Island and then into the Rio Grande Valley as well. And uh, this is that's one of the more unfortunate parts about this. They've had a terrible, terrible coronavirus crisis in the Rio Grande Valley. And here we've got a hurricane uh, coming in later today. So right now, an 80 mile per hour storm. And uh, again, it's getting a little bit more organized over time. We might see uh, just a little bit of tightening here in the eye wall in the last uh, few frames of the radar. And you can very clearly see that that eye wall is now starting to come on shore. This is Padre Island right in there. And so Padre Island bearing the brunt of the storm. Uh, also, this is Baffin Bay in there, and they've gotten a wind gust of 70 miles per hour. So it's in that eye wall where we're going to see the, the very strongest winds. Uh, winds now gusting to 51 at Port Aransas. And uh, there's a closer look for you. And you can see that very strong uh, northern eye wall coming right down into Mustang Island and into Padre Island. And that's where winds have been gusting up to 70 miles per hour. We certainly can't rule out some even stronger gusts than that. And this is a look at how this is going to play out through the rest of the day today. So here you go. Uh, going into 6 p.m., 60 to 75 mile per hour wind in Corpus. But you've also got this very strong onshore flow into Corpus and points farther north as well. And that happening right as high tide is coming in. High tide coming in at about 7 p.m. So uh, that's where we're going to be looking at a really significant water level rise. We're seeing that already right now. We're seeing water level rises of five feet uh, there at uh, the Bob Hall Pier. And we're, it's just going to get worse as we get deeper into the afternoon and into the evening. Uh, then we go into 11 o'clock tonight. And this is what we mean. This is what Jen's talking about. It's a very long duration event, still gusting very strong in Corpus. There are going to be widespread power outages. You see in the Rio Grande Valley, 
Now, getting up to 60 to 75 miles per hour in McAllen, and this is going to be that way through the, the right through the night. Really, it's going to be right into the overnight, into the very early morning hours. Still gusting 60 to 75 miles per hour. The models have been pretty consistent about showing this strong wind field, making it all the way into the Rio Grande Valley, and then finally after that, as it begins to interact with terrain, we see less wind but very heavy rain coming into parts of northern Mexico, including Monterey. Much more coming up. Let's take a live look at Port Mansfield, Texas. This is about 75 miles north of Brownsville. It's about the same south of Corpus Christi. And you're watching the palm tree sway in the wind. Winds right now only gusting to about 36 miles per hour. But we've seen stronger. We will see stronger. This is an area that's set up right along that western eye wall of our landfalling Hurricane Hannah. And we're going to be in and out. I mean, this has been slow to move in. So we're in and out of the very strong wind gusts. The rain bands are just nonstop uh, right here, putting down the heavy rainfall. And then, then I think we're very close to probably the point of landfall in this area. And so we'll be in the eye. Everything will calm down. We'll get a break from the rain. And then we have to get through the eastern side of the system. And that, unfortunately, is going to be just as fierce, if not worse. We've got a lot of really heavy rainfall rates in those bands that are set up on the eastern side of the storm. So in places like Port Mansfield, we have quite some time to go with these kind of conditions. All right, let's go back to Carl Parker and talk more about some of the latest reports coming in. Um, Carl, I just saw um, on the Weather Service chat that there's some flooding up around Corpus Christi and the marina up there. So, you know, even if you're not right at landfall, there is there is going to be impacts. Absolutely. There's this very broad uh, onshore flow, and so we're looking at a storm surge threat all the way up the coast, uh, practically all the way to Galveston, and then also a severe threat, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Uh, this is the latest on the storm, an 85 mile per hour storm now and moving west at eight miles per hour. So the forward speed still slow, uh, still steady and uh, just a little bit stronger as it's still sitting out over the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this area right here is uh, what we call a mesoscale discussion. That's an area that the Storm Prediction Center is looking at for possibly issuing a tornado watch. So we'll see if that in fact happens. We're seeing some of these banding features that are coming Coming on shore uh, near Galveston and farther south into Brazoria County, uh, down towards uh, Freeport and East Matagorda Bay there. And, you know, as there's a lot of shear in the atmosphere, and by that what we mean is winds are coming out of different directions in the lowest 5,000 feet of the atmosphere at the surface and 5,000 feet up. When you have that kind of directional shear, there's a lot more spin in the atmosphere in general, and storms can acquire that and begin to spin themselves. And that's part of the process that leads to the development uh, to a, uh, of tornadoes. So we've got a severe threat that extends from uh, basically all along the Texas Gulf Coast with the possible exception of the far northeastern section of it. And on our Torcon, we've got a 3 out of 10 in South Texas and a 2 out of 10 uh, a little bit farther off to the north. Now, looking at the trends here on the radar, we've got a gust of 51 miles per hour in Port Aransas, and that's probably where we're going to be uh, over the next several hours here. You notice this is a velocity data. It's a different way of looking uh, at the storm, and we're looking at the wind that is coming toward the radar, and so that's in green and then blue and then dark blue. Where you see the dark blue, those are values of 80 to 90 to 100 miles per hour, and then you see wind that's moving away from the radar in the yellow, uh, sort of brownish color, and then orange as well. And so this is showing us some of these velocities that are sitting at, at very, very high uh, elevations, at, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand feet. They're very strong winds aloft. And so, the, you know, the question is, where is that going to be coming down to the ground? Well, the most immediate threat for very strong wind is going to be right in here. That's the inner eye wall right there. You've got this sort of a secondary band that is coming into Corpus Christi. And so along with that, we're going to be in these winds of 50 to 60 miles per hour, probably for several hours, but the very worst of the wind is going to be passing to your south with that inner ring, that eye wall that is now coming into the coast. 
That is moving in along Padre Island and in Kennedy County, which is sitting right in there, a relatively low population in those areas, thankfully, but the people that are there are going to be in for quite a storm, uh, certainly winds gusting well over 70 miles per hour. And then the core of the storm is going to drop right down into Port Mansfield, into Raymondville, Harlingen, McAllen, uh, into deep South Texas, the Rio Grande Valley. And those areas are going to be in for quite a windstorm tonight in addition to a lot of very heavy rain. So hurricane warnings in effect from Corpus and on southward. I think it's going to be a little tougher to get sustained hurricane force winds in Corpus at this point. Uh, so, you know, some slightly better news there. Uh, this is one of our high resolution models showing you the wind gust forecast. And there you see the storm moving in making landfall probably here in the next couple of hours, uh, maybe in the next few hours, and we see this big push of water coming in with that uh, near Corpus Christi and points farther south, and that's right at high tide or approaching high tide, so we're going to be looking at a, a real risk for storm surge flooding at that time. Then that wind field continues to move down into the Rio Grande Valley, and it's going to go on for hours and hours and hours. Very strong wind in McAllen, in Harlingen, uh, starting late tonight, but then going all night long and even into tomorrow morning, a long duration event here in deep South Texas. More coming. A look at Southern Texas as residents are bracing for Hurricane Hannah as our first of the season in the Atlantic. It's set to make landfall any minute, making it the first hurricane to hit Texas in July since Hurricane Dolly did in 2008. And we're attracting the potential for our next name storm in the next five days. First warning, meteorologist Brooke Silverang maps out how Hannah is, Hannah's path is going tonight. Brooke? Yes, it is still working its way across the Texas coastline there. So about 50 miles south is the eye of the hurricane from Corpus Christi. And let's get a look at that in the live radar as we zoom in. You can see the eye wall. This is where it's pretty quiet, but the strongest winds around the eye wall there. So you can see that. And as that continues to work its way onto land, they're dealing with the storm surge, the very strong winds, of course, the frequent lightning with these storms. But as we get a close look on the live radar, already looking at some of the eye there on land already. Again, this is a look at Texas. Just a reminder, it's hurricane hurricane season we still have a few months left of it and we just want you guys to be prepared but you can see a lot of rain a lot of thunderstorm activity especially on the outer bands of Hannah. and this will continue to work its way onto land and when it is cut off from the gulf that's when we are going to see a weaken down into a depression now we are talking about gonzalo no longer because it is post-tropical depression in Gonzalo. It weakened tremendously after it passed over the windward leeward islands, and it's just a cluster of rain right now. So very disorganized, not expected to become anything after that. Now we do have another area of interest that we have been watching start off of the wave off of Africa, still looking to work its way off to the west. It's moving about 15 miles per hour. This cluster right here has about a 70% chance over the next five days to become our next name storm. Models do take it well out west. Of course, there's still a lot of time to see where this thing ends up and how far it can develop. So we are going to keep keeping an eye on that. But very beautiful scenery here over in South Florida. We take a view up the Treasure Coast too. We have temperatures running in the 80s and a few showers on the radar. So when I come back, we're going to take another look at tropics and I'll show you where that rain is heading for tonight. Turning now to the tropics and the first Atlantic hurricane of the season. Hurricane Hannah is expected to soak South Texas this weekend. First alert meteorologist Ryan Phillips is keeping an eye on the storm. He joins us now with the very latest. Ryan. Alina, good evening. You know, just 24 hours ago, this was a 50 mile per hour tropical storm. Instead, now 24 hours later, a 90 mile per hour hurricane just having made landfall here on Padre Island in South Texas here. So between Corpus Christi and Brownsville, we're taking a little bit closer the storm gaining intensity as the day has gone on and just whipping winds, storm surge and heavy rain now into South Texas. So just to the, the north of Port Mansfield is where the system just made landfall about five minutes ago. Of course, all the wind and rain still cycling in across the state of Texas, but we're going to focus the threat from the wind to soon the rain as the rain spread inland. Category one hurricane again that was called just early this morning. So uh, our first hurricane of the season moving off to the west southwest at eight as I mentioned 90 mile per hour winds here still looking for this to drift off to the south and to the west but along the way anywhere from six to 12 inches of rain. There could be some locations where we see nearly 18 inches of rain. The system will spin down and then we'll finally get a little law in the action, but there's other items to watch there in the tropics. We'll talk about that coming up in about 10 minutes.
Welcome back. We're following uh, Hurricane Hannah at this point. A live look at the Corpus Christi area. Very low visibility. You can see the sheets of water getting blown across the parking lot there uh, because the wind is sweeping that rain in curtains. Uh, that is part of the eye wall from Hurricane Hannah moving through. Category 1 storm and upper end category 1 storm at this point. 90 mile per hour winds and just not a comfortable walk across the long parking lot there for sure. Uh, part of the Weather Channel crew moving through. Well, we're going to hear from Paul Goodlow in this area in just a second, but let's talk about where we're at right now, and that is with a fairly symmetrical storm. That's important because it means you have that core of tropical, tropical air and very heavy rains. Look at that circle around that eye. That eye was clearing out as uh, uh, you know landfall approached, and uh, with that, the heaviest rain is in that core, wrapping all the way around, and with the the motion west southwest there's going to be a pivot point here where you're in either the west side or the south side eye wall in many of these locations for a very long time. Now, anywhere north of that uh, uh, that eye and that center, you have onshore flow, and that has really uh, brought up the water levels. Uh, in, even into the bay uh, near Corpus Christi, a four, almost a four-foot water rise uh, compared to normally dry ground. Still at this point, uh, water is, is, is almost four feet higher than it otherwise would be. Bob Hall Pier with three feet additional water, Port Lavaca with three feet additional water. That is a life threatening amount of water in, in, in that increase. Now, uh, how about the Houston Galveston area? You're nowhere near the center of the storm, and yet with onshore flow with this big circulation, one to two feet of water rise still at this point. So, where do we go from here? Well, our storm will continue to move across South Texas very slowly through the overnight hours, eventually into the very uh, mountainous terrain of Mexico, which adds its own component to the flash flood risk as the water will flow downhill. The low lying areas will get hit much harder and the mountains themselves will squeeze out more of that water. So that is a concern for our friends over the border. But, uh, you know, tropical storm winds all the way to the Texas coastline. There are tropical storm warnings all the way out to the Mexican border. Uh, and that potential is still going to be with us with regards to not only this core of very heavy rain moving through, but also that potential for very gusty uh, winds along with that. So again, here's a look at that current radar picture. There's the core of our wind uh, and, our, and our rain for that matter. And we have some flash flood warnings that have popped up as we uh, zoom in towards our core. Look at this. This is the, uh, the, the high resolution radar. And why I have this up is because with these banding features, one right here, one right here, and you could make the argument that the third might be the most likely spot for this, we're starting to see some signs off the coast of rotation. A little bit as a signature in these small, almost supercell looking features within the bands of rotation off the coastline. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of that making it all the way onto land to give you those kind of brief uh, but potentially potent tropical induced tornado warnings that we often see with a landfalling tropical system. But the night is not done. And very often what happens is as the sun starts to set, those winds at about 5,000 feet up get even a little bit stronger. And that might be just enough. That might be the kicker that we're waiting for tonight to be able to see that uh, rotation really pick up and, and a tornado threat increase. So in the Corpus Christi area, not only have they seen the water rise, not only have they seen the wave action and the heavy rain, but now potentially a tornado threat later on this evening as well. And that's where our own Paul Goodlow has been standing by for us in Corpus Christi. Paul, a bit of a rough night, to put it lightly, for the people in Corpus Christi. <laughs> Yeah, at the very least, you know, we had some light rain earlier, but now we're seeing kind of sheets of heavy rain coming on through. I am literally dripping. As the kids say, this is not my drip that I really wanted to have out here. I mean, you were getting soaked. And amazingly, we're still seeing people running around here, I guess, to say that, hey, they, 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 they dealt with a hurricane, but we're still seeing the winds coming straight off the Gulf right now. So uh, due east wind sustained 20 to 35 miles per hour, gusting uh, 35 to times even close to 60 miles per hour and every now and then we see the heavy kind of sheets of, of rain come through it's like needles it's stinging rain being whipped by these 40 50 mile per hour wind gusts like those are right now it's making it very difficult for my cameraman to, uh, Austin Anderson to keep his lens clear because the, the wind is hitting straight into the camera and we do have high tide we're about an hour away from high tide wow I can actually feel the stinging through the jacket 
high tides coming up, so we're not quite done with our surge, with our push of water from the Gulf of Mexico, which has already done quite some damage. We saw uh, the very end of a bomb called here being destroyed. This here was, it is built out of uh, steel and concrete. It was uh, meant to withstand winds up to 26 feet, but we had a lot of duration, long duration, the wave event with this thing, and it's still ongoing here. As far as I can see, I'm seeing waves coming in uh, from the Gulf of Mexico, uh, doing a little, a little bit of uh, beach and dune erosion as well. Most of this island has a pretty healthy dune system. Wow. <laughs> and even that is taking a beating from the onslaught of Hurricane Hannah. We're in this for the rest of this evening and into the overnight hours. Things will get better and improve for people here on vacation after we get towards tomorrow morning. So hunker down, stay in a safe place. It is not safe to be outside. We notice what the light even streets running here in the island as we're driving over here. More coverage of landfalling. Hurricane Hannah continues on the Weather Channel. And we welcome you back to our continuous coverage here. We've been wall to wall through the day today with everything, mile by mile, of what became Hurricane Hannah. Uh, from this point on, we'll see a weakening. We reached our peak at 90 miles per hour, but from this point on, we'll go down. Uh, as we have made landfall here, friction is one of the big reasons here. Uh, no longer deriving its energy out of the Gulf of Mexico, the open water, except for the feeder bands that are still out there. They'll still bring some of that moisture in, but everything's going to change here. And uh, for the better, as we move through time, the two problems that I still see as we look at the radar imagery here is that one, some of the biggest banding that we have at the moment is still offshore. This right here, when it came on shore, had to be wicked. But the thing about it is, this is the northern sections of Kennedy County. There's not a lot of population there. I think I saw a small city or two up in this area, Turcotte, uh, down to Armstrong, but limited. That's got to be right now on US 77, as bad as it's been. Uh, I believe velocity data is going to pick up there really strong. And then offshore, all of this mess that is still offshore has yet to come onshore, right in here. And as a result, this rotates around and you still have this to come. So I'm not ready to say, hey, everything's all right. Uh, this is the eye of the hurricane, the big center uh, circle that you do see with a center somewhere right there on shore. I know we've been talking about a second landfall. It, nothing happened. I mean, that's just a term. Uh, nothing really changed. Still, as it came on into the outer of the barrier islands, uh, it was the same thing that's happening now, so don't let that throw you. It's uh, the same storm. Nothing's really changed here overall, except the wind speeds probably have slowed just a little bit coming into the storm there. And other than that, it is the same. Now, look, this stuff goes up to Corpus Christi, and as you just saw, Corpus Christi is still rocking. Uh, surf is going to be as high as ever in Corpus Christi because the wind is out of the wet. Welcome back, everyone, as we continue to follow uh, our, our developing storms here across South Texas. Gosh, this is a live view of the Raymondville area in Texas. Our own storm tracker, Charles Peak, is in this zone. Uh, tough to see what that is. Is that a fridge that is knocked over and open? Uh, hard to know where that came from, but it probably did not start there uh, throughout the day. That said, gosh, it is really quite uh, breezy. And there's the, the now we're getting a little bit Bit more of a view. We've got the shingles peeled off of that roof. There was some damage on the other side of that carport. Uh, and then look at this. There's, it looks like a truck may have actually been turned a little bit uh, and a lot, a lot of rain blowing down that roadway uh, going in sheets. It is really tough to see just outside of Veterans Park in the uh, Raymondville, Texas area. So if you're in this zone, there's already been some damage. And you can tell from the wind and the rain that we are not done yet. We also have a developing tornado threat. Uh, that is very often the case with landfalling tropical systems. This one, unfortunately, looks like no exception. Uh, here's a look at the radar picture for you. 
the latest uh, center point right in here. The outer bands right in here. Uh, that's one of the tornado uh, warning threat zones. The other one is in this area off the coast. We'll show you both of those. Let's start out with the warning. The tornado potential that's on land is here. Jim Wells and Clayburg included in this just north and west of Kingsville. Tornado warning for you until 745. This is a, uh, you know, one of those lessons in radar meteorology. These tropical induced spins are tough to pick out. They don't usually present the same way, but what we're looking at is in here, this kind of shift, the red and yellow areas meeting up with each other. So a couple of different spots in that complex of storms where there actually could be some rotation enough to give us a tornado. So that tornado warning issued by the local National Weather Service office. I mentioned off off the coast. It's not the most immediate band in the eye wall, but rather this one with these little curly cues out here. One here, one here. Let's take a look at the how the motion of those raindrops looks in those areas and you see how we have the red, the blues and the greens right next to each other. Sometimes it's green and a darker green right next to each other uh, shows you that spin. You got that shear and it's often enough to kick up uh, tornadoes. So that's what we're watching uh, as this band pivots its way in and could come towards the Corpus Christi area. Uh, for the other components of this storm, want to go back into the lab now. Dr. Nab is watching that. The inland flood threat is ramping up in deep south Texas. Also is a significant risk for northeastern Mexico. Both sides of the Rio Grande going to really get a lot of rain. Let's take a look at the current uh, particulars, Category 1, 85-mile-an-hour hurricane. But look at these bands that extend now from Monterey, Mexico, around all the way into Corpus Christi. I mean, that outer band is going to add to the rainfall that the inner portion of the circulation is going to be creating. So this is very, very likely to ramp up some significant rainfall totals that in some spots could be more than a foot. And let me uh, advance to that to show you uh, th this track is not a very fast moving system, maybe eight miles an hour, and it's headed right toward Monterey. So even if it's not a tropical storm by that time, it's going to be dumping tremendous amounts of rainfall. Remember Hurricane Alex in 2010, the big flood disaster we had in this mountainous area? I don't know if it'll be a repeat of that exactly, but the risk is certainly there and when you add up all the raindrops <laughs> over the next couple of days it's really significant this is a broad brush actually three to five over a large area in deep south texas five to eight uh, over a pretty large area in a populous area and in that area as well as monterey mexico the global models are hinting at eight to 12 inches of rain over a large area and isolated spots could get up to a foot and a half. We have a flood advisory Corpus Christi southward in Raymondville and down in Harlingen as well. The Rio Grande Valley, high risk of flash flooding overnight tonight. All right, here's the very latest here when it comes to uh, Hannah making that landfall a little bit earlier today. It was about five o'clock. Padre Island there seeing it. Category one, that was what it was at that point of a landfall with winds of about 90 miles per hour with the central pressure at 973 millibars. Interestingly, it actually made a second landfall. Of course, the first landfall was here on the Barrier Island, but second landfall about an hour and 15 minutes later, about 15 miles to the north northwest of a Port, Port Mansfield there. So two landfalls here when it comes to Hurricane Hannah. There's the very latest. Notice those winds down from where it was when it made the landfall, which is what you would anticipate that land uh, causing some issues here with it. Still category one hurricane though, with those 80 mile per hour winds moving on off towards the west southwest at eight miles per hour. Notice on the satellite view in the presentation, you aren't seeing as many uh, widespread deeper shades of the purple. Well, that's because we are again seeing that weakening. Now there are some flare ups here and there in the last part of this loop right there into Mexico. Look at that big blow up. So some heavy downpours some gusty winds with that. But overall, the presentation starting to look a little bit more ragged in terms of the satellite view an indication that we are seeing it gradually coming down. There's the radar picture and you can see there's the eye showing up there pretty clear and then around that that's the eye wall. That's where you're going to be talking about the more intense rain and intense uh, winds as well. But even out as you work your way northbound out away from uh, the main center, some of those outer bands 
they can produce some tornadoes, isolated tornado risk here for us when it comes to tropical cyclones. And we've got a tornado warning in effect now. That's within this band, just east of Interstate 37, San Patricio County here until 830. You've got that uh, tornado warning that is in effect. So still for about another uh, nine minutes or so uh, dealing with that uh, particular warning. Seek shelter if you are in that area. So again, it's not just the center of the circulation here and around it that we're talking about big problems, but even away from it in the outer bands, heavy rain in that potential, uh, Colleen, for some tornadoes. Well, continuing through late Sunday morning with those winds pretty strong. And of course, with a lot of strong wind, power outage issues. And we've certainly seen that. Look at where we were this Saturday early morning here. Not much in the way of power outage issues. But again, as this thing got closer and closer, making the landfall, look at how the power outages have now come up here in the state of Texas, particularly in that southern part of the state. Current outages now. Uh, close to 95,000 customers without power. So that is certainly a concern here for us. And of course, Hannah, isn't all that we're tracking in the tropics. This is just really lit up in the tropics. There's another hurricane out there and uh, another spot to watch, Colleen. Yes, and Alex, this uh, little area to watch that we were just talking about yesterday, it was a wave, tropical wave coming from Africa. It has really started to develop. And so in the next five days, about an 80% chance of developing as it's moving across the Atlantic. But trying to pinpoint the track of what this Invest 90 L, what the National Hurricane Center has uh, named it right now. It's going to be a little tricky. We're dealing with a Bermuda high. We're also looking at any dry air that, uh, of course, you can see Gonzalo just kind of fizzled out as it moved into the Caribbean. So we're going to see what this invest may do. Will it ingest that dry air? We do have some warm waters. But here we go. This high is going to be kind of dominant in where it steers this next potential tropical system. So this tropical wave is going to move west, but it could take a kind of a, a northerly turn just starting to move across the East Coast, or it could take a turn going more into the Caribbean and then moving into the Gulf. Southern Texas hit by Hannah, the Category 1 storm becoming the first hurricane of the 2020 season, bringing heavy rain as it made landfall tonight near the Texas-Mexico border. Hannah packing winds of 90 miles per hour, knocking down trees, trailers, and even part of a pier. Storm surge causing major flooding, too, in some areas. We've got thousands without power there. Hannah is expected to weaken as it moves over southern Texas into Mexico over the next few days. Meteorologist Brent Cameron live now in the Weather Center with more on the first named hurricane of the Atlantic hurricane season, as well as other areas we're watching. Brent. And the season, as you know, off to a very busy start, fastest start in history. Let's talk about Hannah, which hit Texas, making a striking the estate as a category one today. Also, Gonzalo, the system we were following, a former storm and uh, depression. That one was able to fizzle out, but something new will uh, garner our attention over time. We start with Hurricane Hannah. There you see the giant spin, what was a large eye. Uh, very much uh, slamming into parts of South Texas and still spinning around lots of rain where the flooding concerns continue. This is where we have the 11 o'clock advisory still with Hurricane Hannah as a 75 mile per hour system. When it made landfall at Padre Island, it was at 90 mile per hour strength with its max winds and it'll move into uh, Mexico over the next couple of days and very gradually dissipate. Today, that's what we saw out of Gonzalo in the southeastern uh, Caribbean. The system was very close to land and also uh, very much uh, surrounded by some drier air. So this is the new system. We have lots of time to follow it. 3,000 miles away from South Florida. It is right now a non-classified system, but expected to become a depression, and maybe a storm as we go into the new week. More on that with your entire forecast ahead. Thanks for joining us here on Weather Nation, where the top story on Saturday was Hannah going against the Texas coast. That's Port Mansfield, Texas. You can see gusty winds, heavy downpours blowing across the street. We did have reports of lots of damage across Port Mansfield. We saw we saw several things blown over. Power poles were snapped as well. Several folks did lose power, and we're going to continue to be tracking Hannah. 
And of course, that's not the only concern. This was the scene in the state of Hawaii on Saturday in Waikoloa. I hope I said that right. Beautiful view, but things will be changing there as we go through the rest of the weekend into Monday as Douglas will be pushing its way through Hawaii. Caroline, we're quite active right now dealing with tropical activity. Absolutely. Thankfully, mm -hmm. Gonzalo that we are watching in the Caribbean That's that right. has dissipated, so we're no longer talking about that, mm -hmm. but we still have an area of concern in the Atlantic. I'll be talking about that in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, certainly a lot to get to. We want to take you back to the Texas Gulf Coast. This is what we hate to see, and unfortunately, it was in the forecast to deal with this. The storm surge flooding, and this happened right around Corpus Christi. You can see an uh, entire area there. It looks to be a road and a sidewalk, maybe a park, and some structures out there surrounded by the Gulf of Mexico water, more uh, specifically the Corpus Christi Bay. We saw a lot of that concern there. Here it is, the information uh, with Hannah. It first made landfall on Saturday around 5 o'clock Central Time on Padre Island. That is about 15 miles north of Port Mansfield, Texas. It made landfall again Saturday as a Category 1 with maximum winds at 90 miles per hour. Now, Padre Island is that barrier island. Then it continued to make a second landfall, if you will, for mainland Texas, which occurred in Kennedy County again on Saturday. That was around 6.15 p.m. Central Time, still near the Port Mansfield, Texas area. That's why we're seeing a lot of video like that coming out of Port Mansfield as Hannah did a number on that community and surrounding regions. We continue to see Hannah on the satellites, the infrared satellite radar. You can see that spin as it continues to drift westward and eventually we'll see it push through Mexico and dissipate, likely heading into Sunday night and Monday. We'll probably see Hannah really begin to dissipate, but we're far from done, I'm afraid. So that will be a threat, uh, perhaps some tropical storm force winds overnight. The high surf and the storm surge threat will continue as well. As for many of us, those winds will be out of the east, uh, if not maybe a little bit more northeast in some locations, depending on where you are in relation to that circulation. We've also got the threat for flash flooding, six to 12 inches of total rainfall with this storm with Hannah and isolated amounts up to 18 inches. And then you throw in that tornado potential too. You wanna keep it tuned to the bottom of your screen here on Weather Nation. We have all the tornado warnings scrolling there as they happen. Taking a look at some preliminary wind gust reports with Hannah. This occurred around Saturday afternoon, a few hours I'd say after 12 o'clock after lunchtime there. Laguna Madre had a 104 mile per hour wind gust and we even had reports at the Bob Hall Pier which is near Corpus Christi of a 70 mile per hour gust and uh, some preliminary reports there of storm surge up to five and a half feet at the Bob Hall Pier. So unfortunately, we did see a lot of these numbers verify, in particular right around the Corpus Christi Bay. Tracking Hannah now as it drifts south and west. Again, things are really looking like it'll begin to dissipate. Notice the end of the model run there. That's 7 a.m. on Monday, likely dissipating into the mountainous terrain of central Mexico. As far as your Sunday morning is concerned, we are going to see these showers and thunderstorms continue to rotate around the center of circulation. So that isolated tornado or quick spin up uh, water spout coming ashore is certainly a concern. Heavy rain, flash flooding, all the threat through the overnight to throw in that with the gusty winds. Uh, not going to be a very comfortable night, I'm afraid, in South Texas. All right, folks. Don't worry, your TV is not broken. This is the view the hurricane hunters had as they flew into Hannah yesterday. Wait on it, wait on it, not much to see. And then the revelation. As they approach the storm's eye, the clouds part, the sky's clear, they get a gorgeous shot of inside the hurricane. How about that? Unbelievable, that specially configured C-130 can certainly take all that those storms dish out. And trust me, a lot of times that ride is the bumpiest. If you are a commercial flyer and you don't like a turbulence, that is not the job for you. All right, folks, welcome back. It's 29 past the hour. Welcome back to AMHQ Weekend. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf, along with meteorologist Kelly Cass. And we've got the wild ride with Hannah. We sure do continue to make headlines this morning after making landfall just yesterday along the Texas coast. Take a listen to this. That's right, fierce winds from Hannah ripping apart this fence. This is in Port Mansfield, Texas, up, up, and away. 
Yeah, lifting the fence with ease. You have wind gusts around 83 miles an hour. It sent it flying. Look at that. The trees also just getting punished as heavy rain came down coupled with the wind. And Kelly, this bomb was just one of several cities in South Texas that was hit very, very hard by Hannah. Back to you, Kelly. Much of southern Texas and now into northern Mexico, this thing just has a lot of tropical moisture. As you might imagine, it is a tropical storm now, no longer a hurricane, but still packing a punch when it comes to rainfall. So here's the latest that we have for you from the National Hurricane Center. The last advisory still has the winds up around 60 miles per hour, closest to the center, which is now moving across the Rio Grande. It's moving west-southwest now at 9 miles per hour, and that will take it basically into Mexico for the rest of the morning and then eventually uh, you know, losing more of that wind, knocking down tropical depression status, but still it's going to cause a lot of heavy rain as it's doing right now. Look at Port Mansfield. You've got gusts around 46 miles per hour, a steady wind at 32 miles per hour. Brownsville, steady wind at 32. You guys are gusting even higher at 54 miles per hour. So as you can see, tropical storm conditions are still very evident from the current conditions, and that's why we still have these tropical storm warnings in effect for several counties across southern Texas. So the flooding is going to be the biggest concern going forward. We still have flash flood watches that extend from Victoria to Corpus Christi all the way down into the Brownsville area. A lot of roads being impacted. A lot of power has been knocked out. We had gusts between 90 and even 100 miles per hour with this storm as it roared ashore yesterday. So as you can see, uh, South Texas uh, taking on the chin here when it comes to outages of electricity. More than 250,000 customers around that area still without power. Right, right now, 273,000 customers without power in all of Texas, and you can see the majority of them down in the southern part of the state, including Hidalgo County, Reynolds, where 168,000 customers are in the dark night, right? Tropical Storm Hannah is still battering the state of Texas right now after making landfall as a Category 1 hurricane yesterday afternoon. You're taking a live look right now at the beach. This is on South Padre Island, which is also getting hard hit right now by whipping winds of 60 miles an hour. You can just see, while well, the camera is a little blurry, you can see those flags just whipping there in the wind there. A lot of heavy surf as well. So let's turn now to meteorologist Zach Kobe. Good morning, Zach. Yeah, very good morning, Terry. It is time for a tropical update. Let's talk about Hannah. It is a tropical storm. As of the 5 a.m. update, winds sustained of 60, still gusting to 70. Look at that pressure at 988. So it is taking its time to kind of come back up. So that's why the winds are still pretty strong and taking their time to wind down. Now, Hannah did make landfall as a Category 1 hurricane, a strong one at that, with winds of 90 miles per hour, a minimum central pressure of 973 millibars. It happened yesterday around 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time there on South Padre Island. Right now, winds are still whipping. We've got a 43 mile per hour gust in Hebronville, which is well away from the coastline. McAllen, a 39 mile per hour wind gust, 38 miles per hour gusting in Brownsville and Port Isabel there in South Texas. The other side of the coin is water flash flood warnings continuing for Hidalgo counties, as well as closer to the coastline from Port Mansfield south through Brownsville. This includes Cameron, Kennedy, and Willacy counties uh, through about 730. And I'm likely going to say we'll see more of those because look at how much rain has already fallen. Over a foot of rain just south of Port Mansfield, many cities and towns from northeast Mexico back out through southeast Texas reporting at least half a foot of rain and more is on the way today. High res futurecast continues to show that those outer bands, even though Hannah is winding down, will continue to pound and lash portions of southeast Texas and northeast Mexico. Now we do have tropical wave invest 92L out there in the central Atlantic. This is what everybody's eyes will be on over the next several days because of the high development chance. It's pretty much a, a sink, at least at this point, that we know it will develop a 90% chance over the next five days somewhere between Tuesday and Wednesday. But where's it going? We've got a large Bermuda high out there, which steers this flow out from the east to the west. And this tropical wave is going to experience a little bit of slow development as it's forced to the west by that steering flow. But the question is, once it reaches the Caribbean Sea by late week, where does it go? The long-term track remains uncertain. If that ridge breaks down, it'll take a farther north track. If the ridge holds in place or the storm is weaker, it'll take a southerly track. No reason to worry right now, but it is something to keep an eye on. Computer models are very good in clustered 
that it would go through the Caribbean by mid to late week after that. It's anybody's guess. It's something to keep an eye on. We also have Hurricane Douglas. Looks like I skipped it. Still a Category 1 storm heading towards Hawaii. New this morning, the island of Kauai now under a hurricane warning as well as the island of Oahu. Again, if this were to make landfall there in Hawaii, and it looks like our graphics froze on us, it would be the first landfalling hurricane since 1992. Uh, it looks like, there we go. Well, our graphic machine just taking a little bit of time to uh, get to the seven day forecast. This is 7 News Today in Florida. Let's get started with this live look outside our Northview Village studios on this Sunday morning. So far, it looks like we're off to a nice day. It looks like it'll be a nice pool day, beach day, a day to grill outside. That's right. A lot of sun <laughs> out there this morning. Uh, meteorologist Erica Delgado and the Flex with a look at our first forecast. Erica, good morning. Hey, Ethan. Good morning to you. South Florida, things are looking very quiet for us so far this morning, but we are expecting some rain in the forecast. We'll jump to that in a moment. Let's check a quick take a quick look at the tropics right now. We're now following two different systems. Gonzalo, the tropical storm that was over the Atlantic has dissipated. We'll start off with Hannah, what is now a tropical storm. Still looking quite organized, even though it continues to push far inland. And even though it has lost its hurricane status, it's still producing very heavy rainfall across portions of Texas and across Mexico. Latest advisory, maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. It's now moving towards the west-southwest. And as it does so, it will continue to weaken and dissipate into an area of low pressure. Farther out, though, across the Atlantic, we still find that area of low pressure that we were talked about yesterday. And the National Hurricane Center still feels that there's a very good chance along this orange, uh, red shaded area that we could see a depression form within the next couple of days. You'll notice those rain chances, those development chances, I should say, are much higher than they were yesterday. Well, the center of circulation of now tropical storm Hannah is not far from Monterey, but around that we're seeing a lot of rain, very heavy rain. The flooding risk is high. Several more inches of rain to come from any of these areas in some cases maybe 10 inches of rain yet to come and that is a remarkable stat and that is actually actually common with land falling tropical cyclones but we have all kinds of issues to deal with now wind fortunately really not one of them so much anymore it was yesterday now the winds near the surface have calmed down quite a bit the frictional torque is uh, slowing these things down the wind and so not so much of a factor the damaging wind threat not really there anymore but it is the heavy rain and also that tornado risk. Paul was just talking about that tornado warning uh, for Hidalgo County in Texas. Well, surrounding that, we've got a tornado watch out, which goes until... 10 o'clock tonight. That is a long time from now to be dealing with that threat for tornadoes. Surrounding that, even over much of Texas and the northern Gulf Coast, a very large sort of sort of counterclockwise spin still in place associated with the parent sort of circulation around Hannah, bringing in that sort of southeasterly wind. A lot of rain in Louisiana, potentially some flooding there. And with that southeast wind, that is leading to some local water rises above normally dry ground, some, some flooding potential here with one to two feet water rises common across parts of Texas and areas nearby. The most recent advisory on Hannah has it at a 45 mile per hour tropical storm right about there and it is going to be weakening wind wise very quickly over the rough terrain of Mexico but the flooding threat will continue despite Hannah's sort of reduction in the wind speed. We're going to be dealing with a lot of rain and flooding yet to come life threatening mudslides potentially and flooding as well in Mexico, Jackie, and in southern Texas with a lot more of rain yet to come. Welcome back to Weekend Recharge. There's another hurricane to talk about this morning, and that's Douglas. It's making a beeline for Hawaii. Hurricane warning is posted for Oahu, Oahu County, including the city of Honolulu. There are city and emergency shelter operations that are beginning now 24 hours straight. So let's have a look at what is happening here with Douglas. Hurricane Douglas, a 90 mile per hour hurricane racing toward smoke, the Hawaiian island chain overall and some of them more directly than others. In fact, Maui appears to be on target now for a fairly close encounter with some destructive winds, heavy rain and also very, very high surf. So this is a developing 
developing story. We've been watching now Douglas for many days. It was a very powerful hurricane over the middle of the Pacific Ocean that is now closing in on the Hawaiian Islands. Let's have a look at out in the satellite pictures here showing you that the convective pattern still remains fairly robust. The very strong thunderstorms are still attending the circulation of Douglas and that is going to unfortunately bring some uh, nasty weather to the region in a matter of hours. Picking up some of the observations across the region, you can see that, well, we've got some pretty strong winds now showing up across some of these locations, certainly to get quite a bit stronger as Douglas closes in on the region, not just in Maui, but Oahu and Kauai, everywhere to the west. These islands right in here are most likely to see the uh, most significant impacts from Douglas. Right now on the radar trends, the center of circulation off the camera a little bit, but we're starting to see some of these outer bands rotate their way in, and they will be scraping parts of Maui if they aren't already in a matter of hours with gusty winds increasing throughout the daytime hours today. Something to watch very carefully. Overall, Douglas will continue to migrate westward and only weaken slightly as it does with the center passing very close to the islands, including Kauai, by tomorrow morning. So this is a very significant development that has to be monitored carefully with all the hazards with uh, we typically think of a land falling tropical cyclone that would be destructive wind gusts potentially in excess of 75 miles per hour. Also dangerously high surf and some flooding rains for some spots. Tracking Hannah as it moves into Mexico and a look at the damage done to the Texas coast homes and boats torn apart by the storm's whipping winds. Hannah is weakening since making landfall, but she still packs a punch. Whoa! Hanging onto their hats and their tall cans. Hurricane Hannah made misery for parts of coastal Texas. And though they've seen worse hurricanes, this storm was still an unwanted guest in the Lone Star State. With its nasty winds, it also caused a fire at this marina, not to mention stress and sadness. The marina is my baby. I, I worked very hard there, and it was sad. In Port Mansfield, it was no picnic. People dealt with downed power lines, destroyed marina doors, damaged roofs, and a doozy of a truck wreck. We woke up to the worst of our fears. Whipping winds gave coastal Texans all they wanted. Well, I didn't know it was going to blow this bad and blow a bunch of places of roofs and signs down and everything. Downgraded to a tropical storm. Hannah hovered over the U.S.-Mexico border with winds of nearly 50 miles per hour. It was expected to bring as much as 18 inches of rain on parts of South Texas and northeastern Mexico. Hannah has since been downgraded again to a depression, and there's more action in the Atlantic, which will likely become the season's next named storm. Meteorologist Brent Cameron tracking it all. Brent. It is a busy time in the tropics. Let's get you caught up with the very latest as of just this hour with tropical depression. Now, Hannah downgraded to a depression. Show you those wind speeds in just a moment. But right now it's not the wind, but more so the rain into northeastern Texas and still over parts. I should say South Texas and northeastern areas of uh, Mexico where the rain continues to come down with some flooding concerns. Also mudslides, landslides, also a possibility. There's 35 five mile per hour winds associated with the system now close to Monterey in Mexico and moving to the southwest where it will uh, continue to weaken and eventually rain itself out. Elsewhere in the tropics, only one other area and it's not a classified system, 3,000 miles from South Florida, basically in the middle of the Atlantic, far from any land that has a good potential of uh, developing into a depression and the season's next potential storm uh, that given about a 90% chance over the course of this week as it moves off to the west at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Now a little bit of good news as we continue to watch this just to the north there is plenty of Saharan dust and that doesn't necessarily help these tropical features that dust expected to continue and kind of move in uh, conjunction with it off to the west northwest at the same time so that could be a little bit of the uh, good news we'll talk more about the tropics and your local forecast in a few minutes.
Got some new video to show you coming out of Hilo, where the surf has been picking up. You can see uh, it looks like some people out there enjoying that surf, but you got to be careful. The, the surf associated with these tropical systems uh, acts a little bit differently, right? Certainly for this time of year, you're not used to seeing enough swells to be surfing on. They're surfing on these, but there's often different currents. There's different breakers, different wind directions. There's a lot going on when a tropical system comes through. And so, yeah, the surfers are out there. Hopefully they're all watching each other's back, um, you know, using that buddy system for the rest of tonight towards Oahu, towards uh, Lahui area. Gosh, make sure uh, uh, on Kauai, in particular, you're only going out there if you're the most experienced of surfers. Do not mess with this if you're, you know, an amateur or a novice like I would be. It's just not worth it. Uh, I know there are high surf advisories in place. That's very attractive to those of you that wait around all year for some big swells to tackle and to surf on. But again, these tropical swells are just a different story. They're a different beast. They act a little differently. I want to bring in Dr. Nab here, well versed in the, the ins and outs of the wave action from these tropical storms and tro you know tropical systems, I should say, as we still have a hurricane from Douglas. And uh, Dr. Nab, uh, this one's going to bring some high swells uh, through many of the islands. Yeah, there could be some very dangerous breakers and, uh, you know, unpredictable ocean conditions that even some seasoned surfers and swimmers might not completely be expecting. So it's really good advice to be staying out of the water until this hurricane gets clear of the islands. We have a position and intensity estimate from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center they've just issued. Max sustained winds still at 85 miles an hour, still moving west-northwest at 16. But the good news today has been there's been a lot more northwest than there has been west. A little bit of a jog to the right today that has spared uh, Molokai and uh, Oahu from getting a much closer encounter with this hurricane than otherwise would have been the case. But it's still too close for Oahu for CPHC to take down the hurricane warning. I'll show you why in a little bit. And certainly it is prudent to have that warning up for Kauai because it, it, any bend to the left and they're going to get a lot closer brush uh, maybe even direct, more direct impacts than Oahu's getting. Flash flood watch is still up also because uh, some banding could uh, you know, even be on the backside of this into tomorrow. So don't count out heavy rain and flash flooding. And then the high surf advisories and warnings up for a very, very good reason. And we've got really gigantic waves off to the north of Oahu. So certainly ships don't want to be going through that area. So here is the past track and the forecast track. And you'll notice, see in there, see that little bend to the right? If we hadn't had that bend to the right today and you extrapolate this part of the track in a straight line and we're going right past the northern shores of Oahu and Kauai it, with a much more direct hit. So we caught a break there for Oahu. The worst of it is offshore, but Kauai, you're still in that cone, and it's not going to go below hurricane strength until we get past the Hawaiian Islands. Look at those overshooting tops in that very active western and southwestern eye wall. My goodness, can you imagine if this was down here, Oahu would be getting rocked with much stronger winds and heavier rainfall. Uh, and if you look at that long-term radar loop, you see that little bend to the right, and then maybe is there a bend to the left starting here? I really hope not, but Kauai it's still not certain what we're going to be uh, getting. Now, look at there is a little bit of a band here forming just off the southeast shore of Oahu, right near Hanama Bay, right in that area. So if that starts to propagate farther west, you could get some locally heavy rains. It does not take much rain uh, for a very long time uh, to get some flood advisories and flash flood warnings for Oahu, and you get a little more terrain enhancement, and then you can certainly have that happen. Let me scoot this up a little bit so we can take a closer look at what's going on relative to Honolulu. So this is uh, that band I'm talking about right in here. And if you take this kind of band and you push it into this area, then you can get some terrain enhancement from the Ko'olau Mountains. And that could squeeze out a little bit more rain. And usually this is the windward side and you squeeze out the rain on this side. But if you have some bands coming in from this direction, winds from the southwest as this passes by, you could squeeze it out maybe a little bit more on the Honolulu side. So, Mark, we uh, have had a few reports of power outages, a uh, few bits of uh, debris and some strong gusts. If any of these little bands set up uh, later tonight or tomorrow morning, I could have a little bit more of that on Oahu, but I'm getting a little more concerned about Kauai having a closer call with this hurricane than Oahu. Yeah, absolutely. Been watching that trend. Uh, hopefully that jog back to the northwest begins sooner rather than later. Meanwhile, 
We're still following what's coming out of South Texas and far Texas, for example, huge amounts of rain here. The streets filled up pretty dramatically with the water uh, thanks to some very heavy rain. We had fresh water flooding through much of South Texas. Now the recent trends are your friend here uh, on the Texas side of the Rio Grande. That is where the rainfall is now finally easing up. Look at that change over the past several hours. The rain's uh, really can, you know, dissolving on that uh, Texas side of things. No such luck here on the Monterey side of things. Gosh, this storm is going to be crawling through the mountainous terrain of central Mexico. The inflow tropical air is still coming into play. Look at the thunderstorm action here. Are you kidding me? This is bad, bad news. We've already seen flooding in Monterey. I'm worried that that's going to go from bad to worse. So if you have interests, friends, family in Monterey, uh, please check in on them and tell them not to be driving around in this. This is going to be some really nasty stuff. Again, on the Texas side of things, we're almost done. We have some rains that are still tied to that big circulation coming into Laredo, but it's not the same as it was. Uh, and that's good news because look at what already occurred. 15 to 20 inches of rain in that corridor where the center from Hannah went. Obviously, there was a flash flood uh, repercussion from that and still some lingering warnings. We'll check back in on Douglas coming up. Well, the Hawaiian Islands are bracing for the impact of Hurricane Douglas this morning. The National Weather Service is calling the Category 1 storm a triple threat, bringing with it high winds, heavy rains, and yeah, storm surge too. But it's possible that the islands could be impacted for up to 12 hours. Local, state, and federal officials have been telling residents to hunker down or even go to a shelter despite coronavirus concerns. So far, the storm has not caused extensive damage, but there have been pockets of power outages. And right now, we are keeping an eye on the tropics this morning. Let's go to First Alert meteorologist Adam Berg with the very latest on that. Adam, good morning. Hey there, so we're tracking two things in the Atlantic Basin. Hanna, Tropical Depression, Hurricane Center, not updating this anymore, but the Weather Prediction Center is, so we can give you some of those stats. And then, of course, what we call Invest 92L. This is just an area that the Hurricane Center is investigating, but this has a high probability, 90% chance here of turning into a tropical system here, possibly even today. So we'll watch that closely. Here is what's left of Hanna. Not much here. Again, the Hurricane Center not tracking this anymore, but the Weather Prediction Center is because there's still a flood threat with plenty of rain still expected with this system. Even weak systems like this, a, a fledgling tropical depression can crank out huge amounts of rain. You can see the system not moving very fast west at five miles per hour. So that's the problem here across the mountains of Mexico. OK, so let's get you now to Invest 92L. Sits in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but it is moving to the west here at about 20 miles per hour. So then you have to start watching some of the usual suspects like the, the Caribbean. What about the Bahamas? That's way down the road. It would be the Caribbean first uh, looking at some potential impacts with this and it would be uh, days from now actually even though it is moving west pretty quickly at 20 miles per hour winds 30 miles per hour. Uh, we'll be watching this system very closely because it does have a high probability of turning into our next tropical depression or tropical storm. So it's, it would be in that red shaded area. This is the area of concern with this potential developing system here and when we use red on our map here we're giving this a high probability of turning into a tropical system 90 percent chance here over the next two to five days and you can see it's making that general direction to the west northwest which would put the windward islands uh, at play here a couple of days from now and we'll watch very very closely Mientras tanto, al menos cuatro personas desaparecidas, daños estructurales e inundaciones ha dejado la tormenta tropical Hanna a su paso por el noreste de México. Así lo informó la Coordinación Nacional de Protección Civil del vecino país. También se han registrado cortes de energía eléctrica, cierres de carreteras y decenas de evacuados. La ciudad más afectada ha sido Reynosa, en el estado fronterizo de Tamaulipas. As we go to the satellite and radar composite, we're seeing mostly clear skies and dry conditions for us. So let's go to the tropics. Here's the leftover moisture of what was Hannah spinning over the Texas coastline, now moving well inland across Texas, southern half of Texas, and Mexico. 
bringing them flash flooding and you notice the system's precipitation has extended still all the way towards Louisiana. Now we are noticing as of 5 a.m. the winds are at 25 miles per hour. It's crawling to the west at 5 miles per hour. All watches and warnings have been allowed to expire as the system barely is hanging on to tropical depression strength. Let's go to a new area we're watching just east of the Windward Islands. It has a 90% chance of tropical cyclone development in the next five days, 80% chance in the next two days. Models pretty much in agreement. It'll head towards the northern tier of the lesser uh, Antilles area, the northern Leeward Islands, that is, as we go into Friday and then Saturday heading towards Puerto Rico. And this will be something we need to watch as it will just be off our coast, just east of the Bahamas. If all of these models play out, there's lots of things we need to play in part with this forecast in the days to come. We have a lot of time to watch it. If you're in a tropical zone, you know this is the season you need that. We're already at Isa Isas. That's the next name on the list. So um, in this very active season, we keep it going. Tevin. All right, Jim. Well, what is left of Hannah is raining itself out right over the northeastern portion of Mexico this morning. The storm slammed into the Texas Gulf Coast late Saturday as a Category 1 storm and new this morning. For anyone trying to clean up and repair Hannah's damage, will do so while dodging more downpours today. Hannah rolled into the Rio Grande Valley with gusto Saturday afternoon. Sustained winds howled at 90 miles an hour. One gust on Padre Island clocked at 103. Hannah took aim at the Harbor del Sol Marina in Corpus Christi. A lot of people have to find a new place to live. Matthew Howard paddled out to get a look at damage to his boat, the pilgrimage. We're going to do everything we can to rebuild it as best we can and uh, make it right again. We are so lucky that our boat still afloat. Um, several boats sank last night from what I understand. Hannah destroyed one house in Raymondville, a town 25 miles inland from the Gulf Coast. Many homes lost shingles. The hurricane killed siding off others. Winds flipped camper trailers and big rigs. Hannah unloaded more than a foot of rain, flooding entire neighborhoods across the Rio Grande Valley. The storm badly damaged Bob Hale Pier in Corpus Christi, along with the restaurant that sits on it. Back at Harbor del Sol Marina, a sense of loss. It's a, it's a close-knit family out here. Everybody's going to feel around. Nearly 140,000 homes and businesses across the Rio Grande Valley still do not have power this morning. But, Jim, of course, we want to take a look back at Hannah. This was a very large storm that rapidly intensified within 24 hours. I, I mean, i got to be honest with you. A big eye, yeah. big eye We were eye watching wall, it Friday. Winds over 100 miles yeah. an hour, and we were worried about that, right? Yeah. We were talking about that. So let's talk a little bit about Hannah and certainly uh, the recap with it uh, as we take a look at what you can see here. There is rainfall this morning, and this is still pumping out the rain, okay? You pretty much come out of the Rio Grande into the Sierra Madre of Mexico, uh, and start heading up at elevation. So Monterey is kind of sitting right at that elevation rise. So they're just sitting in the rainfall this morning. The good news is for most of South Texas along the Rio Grande, a lot of that river has end, or rain has ended. But remember, where it's raining now, guess where that water goes? It goes down to the Rio Grande before it gets out to the Gulf of Mexico. So here's a recap with it, and you can see where it was a tropical storm still at Saturday, uh, 5 a.m., and guess what? Boom, then it becomes a hurricane as we worked our way through the day, and certainly on Sunday, uh, not surprising to see the eye, the eye wall structure, big eye, coming in between Corpus Christi and Brownsville here uh, into uh, an area certainly that needs no hurricanes, especially with the kind of rainfall we had. Look at, the new, look at Padre Island, near 103 miles an hour. Couldn't believe that when I saw that uh, gust come in. That was incredible. Port Mansfield at 83. We had uh, damage to roofs uh, in people's homes there. And, of course, we still have power outages in Hildago County uh, at 89% of the county. Or, I'm sorry, 89.9%. A thousand people, I should say, uh, without power at this time. So rain was plentiful, too. We knew this thing was going to be a big soaker. Uh, you deal with the right side and the left side of two eye walls, you're going to get a foot of rain or more. And we certainly had that at uh, South Padre Island.